guys. A little bit, yes. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I said to avoid mm. I guess you guys didn't see I it. Know. That's okay. I know. Yeah, you no, did. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> we're, it's okay. We were just talking about how Licky Glock is the worst. Yeah. Oh. Good, good to know. So Licky Glock, good. So, so Hello, you know, Glock. we're talking about you. Well, off oh. You've been called out, Licky. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Anyways, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dungeon Lounge this Sunday afternoon uh, or evening, depending on what time zone you're in. I think you're in evening for now for you now, right, Mari? Uh, yeah, it's about 6 p.m. for me. Okay. Ah. Time zones. Time and, uh, zones. Especially with t- the daylight savings literally just oh, last night. Oh, God. Oh yeah, I'll spend I hour of my life even... and I want it back. Yeah, I didn't That's even know what was happening. I <laughs> know, same. I'm I woke up and I'm headache. like, why am I so tired? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, the pain. <laughs> but Government yes, uh, just stole an hour. <laughs> yes. But yes, as you can see, uh, it's all all three of us uh, today. So you got here, you got me, Elizabeth. Yeah, you even labeled our names. Look at that. We're Ooh, labeled. Fancy. Ooh. Fancy. Oh my god. Fancy. So fancy. Yeah. So I I guess, you know, we can still do introductions anyways, but hello. My name is Elizabeth. I am Banshee. On my r- right, your left, what are directions, is Flora. <laughs> hello, everybody. Who may or may not be a dragon. No. Not <laughs> no. Raccoon. Don't even start. <laughs> and then opposite Flora is Sasha. Hi, everybody. Griffin. I'm a Griffin. He's wiggling. You're wiggling. Wiggling. Go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. wiggle. <laughs> and then on the very far side is our very special guest today, Mari the Ganger. Hello. <laughs> Thank I'm... you, Licky. And I'm Sorry. streaming over on my one as well, just for my oh, guys that are watching. Just uh, just let them know what, what the Dungeon Lounge is about. Okay. Uh, the Dungeon Lounge uh, is a shared channel. So you've got myself, Flora, and Sasha. We each take turns streaming um, and play a different uh, variety of games. Uh, right now I'm working through Hades. Flora is about to finish up Sekiro. And Sasha is playing uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. And on Sundays is usually our group streaming day where we either maybe play some uh, tabletop RPGs or we play, uh, right now we've been playing a lot of Civilization uh, or Raft. <laughs> oh, God, Alosin. Oh. Oh. Hello, Alosin out there. Hi, Alosin. Hello. Space Alosin. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Vampire Masquerade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah. in terms of what we're <laughs> get your blood redeems ready for blood <laughs> redeems. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yes. The uh, what we kind of uh, when we were talking about doing a uh, collab, we kind of agreed to talk about Vampire: The Masquerade, which is a tabletop game that is part of the World of Darkness line of games. Um, I think our discussion, we're going to try and stay focused around fifth, but uh, I guess here by way of introduction, how about we each mention how we were introduced to the world of vampire, uh, or if we're brand new to it. So I guess I'll do, I'll go first. Um, I started playing vampire, uh, specifically vampire, the Requiem during the quote unquote new world of darkness phase edition, which I think is now retroactively called Chronicles of Darkness. Uh names is weird uh or would be more known as third edition if you want to use numbers and be chronological yeah. about it <laughs> yeah. um so my version of the lore is always a little bit skewed because i tend to view it from how because requiem tried to redo the entirety of the lore and like like slashed half the clans and things like that so so uh, i get my, rid of my my boys <laughs> yeah they, they they got rid of the bruja the bruja and, oh no, uh, no that's fine the bruja can go oh. Oh, which, which who did they get rid of that you that you cannot forget? Uh, no, I don't know. Did they get rid of Toriador? Yes, they did. Oh, disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Very disappointed. They replaced it with something called the Deva, which was meant to be kind of like a merge of like I think the Toriador and a few other of the quote unquote artsy clans. Oh, uh, it didn't work. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then yeah, Torador subsequently then became a bloodline, which was the same fate as the Malkavians, which became a venture. Hey, <laughs> Hello, Doctor Pep. Anyways, uh, moving on. Flora, how did you find out about vampire? Oh man, uh, <laughs> the very first vampire game I ever played. It was like 
back when dinosaurs roamed the earth <laughs> and I was in high school. Uh, I believe it was second edition. That makes sense. If it if it's the what what the what was the basis for twentieth anniversary, then yeah, it was probably second. Yeah, first, yeah. Second edition you were playing. It was it was the base of twentieth anniversary. <laughs> Uh, but you know, before the twentieth anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Because <laughs> uh, you know we're all old and stuff. We're all old and going oh. to die soon. Yeah, we're all yeah. Entropy. <laughs> My bones are crumbling to dust as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like I don't even really remember a lot of it. We were in my friend's basement, and uh, she had just got the book, and we were very excited to play it. Mm. I don't remember a lot <laughs> about the campaign, other than I think it ended up with, like, uh, at least half of us dead. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't last very long, but it it was still a lot of fun. I, I remember having a lot of fun with it. Oh, that's good. So that was, like, my first kind of, like, <laughs> non-Dungeons and Dragons gaming experience. Mm -hmm. So, Sasha, how, how, how did Vampire ensnare you? <laughs> uh, my story isn't as exciting. I just, I used to chat online on a role-playing server. And, uh, um, and I made up vampires and then... Through a mutual friend of Flora's, Elizabeth and mine, uh, got introduced to LARP several years later, and I did some vampire LARP as well. And oh, nice, nice. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, I've done table topping with Flora, Elizabeth, and some of our other mutual friends as well uh, on, on a more steady basis. Um, mm -hmm. Online server like died years ago, but. Um, Rip. Rip. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, that, that server was a mixed bag because there were both awesome people and not so awesome people on it. But that's basically how I got introduced to like the entirety of World of Darkness because some of these uh, chat rooms had like every game running simultaneously. So, oh, wow. You, know, you could, you could make a character in Werewolf and then you could also make a character in Changeling and then you could also have a vampire or whatever. So nice. it was like, Damn. yeah, it was really like whoever felt like running a game at, at whichever given moment you were in. Um, mm. But uh, I, I found I, I much better enjoyed it. Uh, face to face with like Elizabeth Flora and our other mutual friends than online because uh, there's that whole personal aspect to it that is mm. completely missing when your name's on a screen. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, quick question. So you said you had like a bunch of like different servers or not servers, maybe I guess uh, boards based on the, the world of darkness property. Were there crossovers? Like were there ever like, okay, the werewolf, the werewolves have, have encountered the vampires is going to be a big cross board crossover doobly do thing um it was attempted multiple times but just due to the different personalities involved and the and the wide variety of knowledge and or lack of knowledge between the people it just um also there was just almost always a lack of people wanting to actually run something everybody wanted mm. to make the characters and and uh, that chat server also had the option of using pictures so you could like pick a picture for your character mm. but nobody actually wanted to run it <laughs> right uh, so the, as a result the, the true you, you had, yeah as a the result true you had of the, all tabletops yeah mm. you had you had more characters than there were games and um people would just create characters on the fly and then have nothing to do with them because oh i don't feel like running a game today so mm. you know Let's just do whatever. And a lot of the time it ended up just being, you know, people hanging out online and the occasional, you know, witty banter back and forth. But yeah. cheeky bit of banter. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean there was a lot of like joking around and being stupid, but <laughs> sorry, <laughs> just <laughs> chat. Chat's being yeah. so, chat's being being uh calling out Flora already. <laughs> Uh, uh, I mean, Bellamy, technically under the world of darkness, uh, raccoons can be ghouled. 
Uh, so they do not become vampires, but they do become thralls of a vampire where they can be controlled and gain some slight benefits from feeding on the blood of a vampire, but they cannot be, as far as I can understand, they cannot be embraced. Um, though I'm sure that there's someone out there. I mean, like, if a British <laughs> Bobby can be turned into a ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Mari, how were you introduced to vampire? Uh, well, I've never actually played the the tabletop game. Mm-hmm. A lot of oh. my experience has come from two of the games. One being the original Bloodlines. Oh, uh, yeah. This is uh, your reminder to reinstall Bloodlines if you haven't. Just yeah. so you remember the game exists. A daily that... reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Play, playing through Bloodlines on my old, really crappy, like, Dell laptop when it was younger. Oh, no. <laughs> And uh, more recently, actually playing the, uh, I don't know, what would you say, kind of almost middling success of uh, a battle royale in Blood Hunt. Oh, yes, that one. Yeah, I know the one you're talking I about. Why I actually kind of enjoy Blood Hunt. Mm-hmm. Like, it's cool having those kind of vampire aspects, like kind of a class base to the whole battle royale thing. Yeah, I remember uh, that's how we found um, another a friend of the channel named Aranami Soul Stealer, who's also a big fan of uh, the Vampire and the World of Darkness line. Um, I remember we raided over while she was playing the Blood Hunt game, I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Also, just so, the yeah. I- the idea of just running around Prague and shooting each one. <laughs> 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 I just like the police are just like, eh, no, this is normal. <laughs> Heavy adventure, pew pew pew. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, but then outside of that, my only other experiences have been a little bit of the, I think, what's it called from on YouTube? The uh, New York by Night campaign? Mm, yeah. Or no, LA by the, Night. The, the, LA yeah, by the, Night. I think that's the uh, the official campaigns being run by uh, the World of Darkness. Yeah. Yeah, the LA by or, Night one. Yeah. That and then I was watching uh, Hunter the Parenting. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, when it comes to like the wider stuff, like actually playing like the tabletop and other stuff, yeah. like I'm I'm pretty much a, a noob to it. Mm-hmm. So another campaign I would highly recommend if you're looking for online campaigns of Vampire to watch, uh, Loading Ready Run did one called Not a Drop to Drink, which oh, I oh yeah yeah that, that was that good. is that is using Vampire Fifth as uh, well. That, mm. that. Is that so. channel name? That's what I've not heard in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> they're still they're they're still going. So yeah, still no, going I, strong. I, I, I uh, think I felt so uh, bad. Uh, recently, I don't know if you know, recall the names. Uh, one of the I think the original founders, Graham. Uh, he had a cancer scare. Oh Jesus! Not too long ago, he's he's sporting the Walter White look right now. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the, but as, as, beard, as far as I know, he's a good frog god. Ghost, he's, doing okay. he's yeah, he shaved it all off. Oh. God, he's got all Heisenberg on everyone. <laughs> Does he wear the pork pie hat? I haven't seen the hat, to be fair. It's like I think the last <laughs> the last time I watched them vivid like you know, on a consistent basis was when they used to do the Friday nights thing for Magic the Gathering. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, oh so hello. Hello, sixteen bow. Don't worry. Hello, hello. Okay. But yeah, we're talking about, about Vampire the Masquerade. How so, but yeah, has everyone... so it sounds like Mari for this maybe campaign that you're gonna be playing in. You're it sounds like you're looking towards the Torador oh, as yeah. your plan. Definitely, uh-huh. definitely looking to play Torador. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 is that? What is that sound, Flora? <laughs> Out of curiosity. Oh, this... <laughs> but no, no, no. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't the sound. That was like a oh yeah, Torador. Okay, no, I just I I know Everyone from a lot of people. The Torador. <laughs> I'm like, I was about it to say either... like. It's e- it was either Toreador or Malkavian. <laughs> mm. But then one of my mods like said to me that you want to play Malkavian, just literally envision envision Reddit with a body. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, pretty accurate. It's the thing is that I find the thing that's frustrating is I think Malkavi Malkavian can be a very interesting clan. The problem is, is and I think Flora, I think you know this term, and I think Sasha, you're familiar with this term. You may yeah. not be familiar with Amari, is what's called a fish mulk, which is the Malkavian where you have a player who isn't, like, I mean, to be blunt, Malkavians are typified by by being mentally ill somehow. Oh, and 
uh, that flavor of mental illness can be handled in multiple ways. And if you have a person who maybe isn't able to handle the material maturely or, you know, doesn't have a good handle on what mental illness can look like, you end up with a fish milk, which is, you know, I'm going to talk to this stop sign because it's aura is purple. The way I yeah. see <laughs> trying to, like, play a Malkavian is that mm-hmm. I just, I take the Malkavian route in Bloodlines as an example. Yeah. You know, having your, your TV just randomly start talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, there is, there's no... There would be no regularity to anything you do as a Malkavian. <laughs> I've I've seen it kind of, and I I mean I know talking about sometimes New Wad is blasphemous, but <laughs> I kind of liked when Malkavian was a sub bloodline of Ventru because it kind of led to that like great intelligence kind of leads to a slipping into paranoia and madness, which was kind of the idea what they had with the Ventru sliding into a Malkavian. Um, bloodline idea, which I found kind of worked. Ventrues are like the the suit wearing like business types, right? Yes, they are the they call business themselves vampire. the the, biz, the biz, angry business vampire. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, all I, all I know because like because like just from playing Blood Hunt, is that like a common team with them is wearing like sleeveless like suit suit vests and like fingerless leather gloves. <laughs> like work gloves. <laughs> they just they just look like bouncers. <laughs> um redeems are okay for the most part. Uh just bear in mind that any sound redeems only I'm gonna be able to hear because I'm the yeah. uh active streamer. Oof. So if you're trying to scare Flora or Sasha, they it won't work. You <laughs> scare me, which is easy. They're only gonna scare Elizabeth. Elizabeth is easily well. frightened. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm really oh. I hope no. your headaches get better, Boo. Oh. Yeah. Hydrate. Have a rest if you need to. Hydrate. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess we should maybe just do a quick like what are the clans type of thing yeah. before like we keep we keep dropping names, but we're like like I'm sure there's someone out there who it's like, what's a vet true? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, feel, feel Elizabeth, you like, have oh. to explain it in your uwu voice. Yeah. yeah. You are, you are the teacher. You are the teacher. Explain to be a vampire, Elizabeth. <laughs> funnily vampire. enough, though, funnily enough, we will, I think Flora might be the most experienced what? vampire player. Well, you, you're the one who started in high school. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't say I'm the most experienced. Like, I played that game, and then uh, I actually didn't play a whole lot of vampire in between. Uh... I mean, uh, I know you guys, you had that, uh, a vampire campaign for a while, the, what was it, the lake one? Uh, that one didn't have a, that, the, the, I know the one you're talking about, Lulu, uh, Wolf Lake, which I believe we did not have a vampire game in that setting. We did have, uh, was that a wolf and mage? Oh, sorry, sorry, And also a mage. For some reason, I thought that was a, that was a vampire setting. um, there was um, a vampire game I played in Wequiem that I believe was set in Mortuanto. And then there was the Sabat game we all played in. Yeah, we played in the Sabat oh, game. The Sabat. Yeah. The, which, which one day we will tell you the story of Cherry yeah. Sparkles. <laughs> we'll tell you, yeah, later we'll tell you the tale <laughs> very, of Cherry Sparkles. I, I, I the get best very, character ever. I get very vivid PTSD flashbacks to the Sabat <laughs> now. <laughs> Taking of that one Samisi from Bloodlines. Oh no. Oh no. no. Uh, and then we had a, what was called, I believe, Atlantic City Vampire. Ooh. Oh, Atlantic City Vampire. I think yeah, that's that what was... I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. I wasn't in that game. Yes, that is correct. Ooh, ooh. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the the quans, oh, you've been playing since ninety three. Oh my god, Doctor Pet, maybe you should be le- leading this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Elizabeth, we might have like a similar amount of vampire games we've played in. Okay, fair enough. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, in terms, so the clans, at least for Vampire Fifth Edition, Vampire Clans. <laughs> okay, I'm stopping that. <laughs> no more. Um, so we got. I'm going to go in alphabetical order. So the first are the Bru- the Bruja or the Bruja. 
Bruja. Pronunciation bru- Brujaha, if you want to. Um, they're very much the, like, if you're looking for, like, a very anarchist, punk, rock, philosopher king bent to your fuck the man vampire type, then Bruja is for you. They're like the, I'm pronouncing the, it wrong. They're like don't the, worry. the bruisers and togs of the. Don't worry, we're all going to yeah. pronounce them all wrong. But yeah, <laughs> I think and... that's the thing about like having like started playing it a while ago, and it's like yeah. the people you play with or you start playing with, it's like they pronounce something one way. So it's mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, you've pronounced this name like Bruya, so it must be Bruya. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. like, you know. Or like with the other one that I never know how you're sp- supposed to pronounce it, Zimitsi <laughs> yes. or Shibse or I, I've also heard Zimise. Um, <laughs> I've only um, ever heard Zimichi. I'd had a matcha um, terribly. Which clan is Twitter the most gay? So I can join them. Bruja. Probably the Toriador. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, the Toriador are fabulous. I love the Toriador. Uh, I mean, honestly, oh, oh really? Any one, them, Toriador? But, yeah. I mean, any clan? Yeah, any any. Clan can have gay vampires, but if you're looking for, yeah. if you're looking for extra flair. If you're looking for flair, Toradora, yeah. done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, just returning a bit to the Bru- Bruja. Yeah, Bruja, sorry, sorry, to, sorry to derail right. that a little bit. Their kind of like core power set is um, celerity, which is got to go fast. Potence, which is I hit you hard, like basically Me just smash. being strong. And presence, which is basically, I'm impressive. This it could be used to like buff like a lot of your social checks, where it's like if you want to look intimidating or impressive, and like to sway people, like not necessarily through like social manipulation, but just by like walking into a room. That's what presence gets you. <laughs> just sheer intimidation. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, like, and then look- every clan. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. When you look at like the artwork they have on the five e book for mm, the yeah, Bria, yeah. It's just like punk, punk, yep. so many chains, so many chains. Yeah. But there's <laughs> rock ability. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. just straight up biker dudes, <laughs> just biker dudes in hoodies. But yeah, the um, and then every clan has something called a bane, which is more or less like the idea, the the kind of the core idea of vampire is that when you are embraced and become a vampire, you get something called a beast, which is basically those animalistic inside terrible urges that is always like you know when you're feeding on blood keep going keep drinking just kill the person just get that blood as much blood as you can or like if you're you know angry and get offended it's you know the the beast is going to be the voice saying just kill them they have offended you like it's that very animalistic in the moment type of fuck the consequences get 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 yours type of voice um, but anyways, in terms of how the, the Bru- the Bruya express that kind of bane is, um, they apparently have, uh, they are bad at containing frenzy and rage. So they are more likely to enter that frenzy state. They get which, mad. They get mad. They have they anger mad. problems. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, the next clam, which I think also got mentioned clam? in chat is the gang. Sorry. Oops. I Sasa? thought you said clam. Clams. Oh, did I say clams? clams. <laughs> the next clams. The Sorry, clams. clams. I'll be a bit the clams. <laughs> <laughs> is the gangrel. Excuse me. Which These are the, is... the wolf people, right? Yeah, it's very much like the, the archetype of the vampire that can turn into a wolf or turn into a bat. That's more or less where the gangrel set, sits in terms of that very, like... <laughs> you know, you have a lot of clans that kind of, like, have an uneasy relationship with their beast... Where the gangrel more like, they nah, just, they friends. Accept it. Bark, 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 I'm a gangrel. Bark, bark, bark. Bark, <laughs> bark. Strangers in the oh, no. Bark, bark. Um, give me a, 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 a stick. <laughs> yes. So, like, their, their powers are shock and surprise animalism, which allows them to take on animal traits. Like, they can pop claws. Hence the jazz hands joke. Jazz hands. <laughs> yeah. The gangrel jazz hands. Uh, fortitude, which allows you to take hits. Uh, more or less, you shake off a lot of hits. And Protean, which is kind of the gangrel, I think it's kind of one of their specials, is, um, it's again, it has more, it's another shape-shifting type thingy. So, yeah. 
If if you if you are playing vampire but secretly want to be playing werewolf, play a Gangrel. Yeah. Also, <laughs> if you're, if you want your to, group won't decided to play vampire instead of werewolf. If play you want gangrel. to look like a shaman. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, Sin. Hi, hello, Sin. That, that's how you get your. That's how you get one over on the GM. It's like I want to play a werewolf. We're playing vampire. I'll I'm play... gonna be a gangrel. God damn it! <laughs> God damn it! Damn it! <laughs> Fine. So the next clan is the Malkavians, which is we talked a little bit about them earlier. the The clan is mostly known for at either before, during, or after they're changed into a vampire. Something broke permanently in the brain. And they are. Um, so it's kind of. Some, what they, I, I believe, like their their bane is that they start with. They have to start with a, a derangement. So uh, it's in like play. If, so. if a vampire embraces someone that has a mental illness, they kind of be. They're kind of like a Malkavian then. Well, or is it just you, due to the, the, the clan that you become as a vampire is very determined by what vampire embraces you. If you are embraced yeah. by a gangrel but are mentally ill, congratulations, you're now a mentally ill gangrel. Oh, God. <laughs> so, Two for the you do need to one. be, but the idea is that vampires of certain clans tend to favor certain children for the purposes of embrace, of embrace yeah. right? While Cavian's going to look for another broken soul to embrace where Gangrel's going to look for another werewolf LARPer. <laughs> I'm being terrible to Gangrel. I'm so I sorry. I feel like you're, st- you're trying your best to stay away from the F word. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you if you are a furry, you just play werewolf. <laughs> you don't yeah, do this hashtab yeah. of vampire. You don't even go Gangrel. You just go all the way. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah when you're, when you you're the token copy, furry, you go find your copy group. of Changing Breeds, and you you go you go to town. <laughs> Are yeah. you Edward or Jake? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay, have a good walk, bird. But uh, yeah, I hope I hope your uh, your headache mm. feels better with a little walk. A little yeah. fresh air might help. Yeah. But, yeah. In terms of what the Malkavians can do. Uh, their th- kind of three disciplines uh, is Auspex, which is allows them to read auras and see emotions of other people, which does play into that, um, you know, like they there there's a there's perhaps an you know maybe a mental illness or what have you, but they're seeing beyond the veil. They're seeing things Ooh. underneath the surface, and hence the you know seeing seeing you know purple auras and stuff. That's that's Auspex more or less at play. Right. Um, the next one is Dominate, which is. You tell other pe- you control other people's thoughts and what they do. Uh, otherwise known as the, you need to play very carefully with this power <laughs> because <laughs> you overuse it. This is a thing. <laughs> Oy. Hello, Lennis. Uh, and then the final is obfuscate, which is the I can turn invisible power. Oh, they could just don't look at me. They could don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not perceive me. Mm-hmm. I do not um, exist. <laughs> dominate is slightly different from compulsion because at higher levels of dominate, you can make people do things they don't actually want to do. It is it is more of forcing your will upon others, not um, guiding their will in a direction that you like. Is maybe an, uh, is, is the gentle version, I suppose. Are we vampires or boy scouts? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. I mean, yes. The um, you know, you're you're generally the idea of vampires. You are ultimately playing a monster. So, <laughs> oh no, you gotta go to sleep, oh, uh, Doctor Pep. That's too bad. Well, Doctor Pep, thanks for dropping by. Mm-hmm. Doctor Pepper. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is short for Doctor Pep. Oh, sucks that you got work today. Oh, no work on Sundays. Blech. Yeah. Boo. I love the in exa- terms of the um the, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. I like these examples they have under the like each of the clans as well. Like mm, I'm just looking yes. at the one from Alcavian. This uh, and they named him Gizzard. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a fish monk. <laughs> yeah. so, it, though I do always feel like it's it's hard sometimes, like especially because you see it like in sometimes in vampire campaigns when you're dealing with new new characters where it's like you need because you're you're ultimately the idea of like vampires. You're creating a mortal who has been embraced by a vampire. So you're not necessarily going to have like, you know, 
like names like Blade or whatever. Like you're dealing with people who maybe been embraced like two weeks ago. So it's like, hi, I'm Tim. Tim the vampire. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> Yeah. Or, you know, Jane or what have you. He, li- he likes I'm how you Tim, with all will fear me. Or the to... joke from, Hunt- or from Hunter, Kevin, the mighty, uh, the mighty <laughs> vampire. Uh, yes, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Look oh. out for Kevin. Oh, it's a fucking yep. menace. God, it's just making me. It's making me think of like I think was it. It's just a short they did, or was it an excerpt from one of the episodes where like they're arguing about the the ninety nine p store. <laughs> Oh, that becomes a whole thing. He actually goes, in later episodes, uh, D goes to a 99p store to get a blender. He gets it. <laughs> it's just like, you can't get one for 99p, you oil barrel. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yes, the, 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 the mighty vampirist Doris. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, I mean, ultimately, any vampire that lives long enough, I'm sure, kind of like adopts a new name. But I, I, because I remember like way back when I think I had a venture character named Stephanie, and um, Stephanie. the character got reused in a later campaign, and she had become Prince of the City. And by that time, she had taken on a title, and she did not want to be called Stephanie anymore. I can't remember what title she took on as a prince, but it was it was you know definitely not Stephanie the Prince. Stephanie. There is the Prince of the City. Stephanie. Stephanie. <laughs> There's like a mean girl's vampire going on there. She was a Ventru, so. Uh, um, is this a D- D- it, va- Vampire can be like D&D, like both use dice systems, you have character sheets, you're, you're playing in a campaign, so they're very similar, but it's a lot of different thematics. Uh, the World of Darkness is more meant to be played in the present era. So you're in the modern world, but the modern world also has behind the veil vampires, werewolves, mages, changelings, mummies, Zombies. demons, hunters. Out of inquisition. I'm probably forgetting. Out of inquis- an inquisition, <laughs> probably something called the technocrats. We're just gonna keep going. I love the technocrats. I remember uh, another vampire campaign. I think it was the, the guy named his vampire Steve. Steve. Steve the vampire. <laughs> Hey, Steve. Yes, tabletop RPG would be the more the, the more correct overarching term. Yes. But. Yeah. Yes, it has a masquerade. The yes. all powerful, yeah. the all terrifying yes. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the the idea of vampire the masquerade. The masquerade is the code of rules that the vampires have to more or less keep their existence hidden from mortals at large. Because the general idea is, while a vampire can you know on one on one combat for the most part beat up a human. Um, you put a bunch of humans together, and it's generally not going to end well for the vampires. Yeah. Speaking of, I should probably once we get through the clans, explain the masquerade rules because that's a whole. That's thing. a whole. Thing. That's a whole thing. Hello, Tip. Hello, Tip. Steve is not a. I'm not saying Steve is a good or bad name. I'm just saying you don't meet many. You know, when you're reading your vampire fiction, you don't see usually see Steve the vampire. I have a Steve who's a real life friend, and he's a great guy. So yeah, of course. Just Steve. Uh, Steve is a great name, just maybe not of a good vampire name. Yeah. I'd had in my chat <laughs> as a comment to the whole, what it, it, a vampire could take on one, uh, okay, but a group. It's just apes to get a strong. <laughs> apes. <laughs> Basically, strong monkeys. Yeah. Monkeys yeah. with guns. <laughs> I remember an old, old wad book. It was like an armory book, and like it got into like because you know that the reason they put it in there is because they got enough questions about it was about how a vampire would react to nuclear ordnance, and it's like <laughs> this is a question. <laughs> it was like, I didn't okay. think I'd have to answer it, but okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> so I said in the study material. <laughs> And the question came up enough that they had to put it into print what the reaction was. But okay, next clan. <laughs> That's true. Teacup, it's just like Sekiro. It's monkeys all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> so our next clan is the Nosferatu. So the Nosferatu are more or less the very much the that kind of like the vampire that's been around, like they haven't necessarily been alive for a long time, but they look like it. The idea of the Nosferatu is that something about the embrace alters them physically permanently and they can't really pass for human anymore the the kind of reference that i've heard is uh, a nasaratu is a walking masquerade breach 
yeah. in terms of any human that sees a Nosferatu goes, oh god, that's a walking corpse. What's wrong what with that? What is going on? This is <laughs> What is going on? Well, yeah, um, I mean, uh, I believe the implication is that it's named after, like, the very first vampire movie, the Nosferatu. Yeah. yeah. And the vampire in that, was, you know, he was a monster. He wasn't a, he wasn't a pretty, pretty sparkly boy. Mm-hmm. With the... Uh, I remember that from all the like <laughs> the idea of it from Bloodlines, like with the the whole don't go outside and be seen. Yep. Use the zoo use the sewers. Here's the sewer, get in there. This is yeah. your home now. Don't don't yeah. feed on humans, feed on rats instead. Eat <laughs> yes. the rats. Yes. So yeah. So yeah, before yeah, vampires the, uh, were hot, basically. Yeah. Before vampires were hot and sparkly, they were Nosferatu. But yeah, so the idea with the uh, the Nosferatu is their power set is animalism, which gives them the ability to control the rats. Pied Piper. <laughs> off you skate. <laughs> Pied Piper style. Um, well, not just rats, other animals too. Uh, off you skate, the turn invisible power, so they can, you know, if they need to go outside and go to the go to the store, they can go to the store, maybe. And then potence, which is the get strong power. I gotta go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> it's just hideous and vile. Because you're the base of any live chickens. You're yeah. right, Lenneth. That is entirely accurate. Yeah. Uh, all Nosferatu count as having the repulsive flaw minus two. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. 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 God. <laughs> all right. And I think we're about to come up to chat's favorite, the Torador. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Yay. So the Torador are very much that when you see like the kind of like seductive aspects of the vampire lore, that's where they kind of put the Torador in. Uh, they're the, a lot of respects, the artists, the ones that, you know, see, see beauty in the blood or beauty in the bestiality or whatever of the vampire condition. I don't know words. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Um, they are. Um, and I know, like, they're kind of, like, the bane and what kind of, like, gets a lot of the hate onto the Torador is they can be distracted by something sparkly. If something is too sparkly or too pretty, it's Torador like a, get distracted by it. It's like a dog with a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny! <laughs> <laughs> yep, so. Dives. <laughs> I'd love to do this thing with you, but there's a really pretty picture over there. Like, <laughs> app for the next. I would, I would love to deal with this politic yeah. problem and and these hunters coming to nice kill us. But there's a mirror here. But did did yeah. you see? Did you see that bird outside on the window? Yeah. Oh my god! Look at this bird. Yeah. <laughs> They're not all sexy sex vampires. They're also magpies. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but they are very much like the the social. Uh, vampires. Uh, in terms of their powers, uh, they get aspects, so they also get that aura reading social power. Uh, celerity, aka go fast, and Ooh. presence, which again is also more flavored in the, you know, when a Torador enters the room, they enter the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're there. Yeah. Yep. But uh, oh. but yeah, and then I, I already kind of mentioned that their their weakness is that they they get easily distracted. I think they also now also take penalties that if they're in something that does not, if they're in an area that doesn't fit their aesthetic, they also get pouty. Uh, let's see. I'll try to read through the bane section. Well, your quickly. character finds itself in less than beautiful surroundings, lose the equivalent of their bane severity in dice. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, this room doesn't match my aesthetic. I don't want to yeah. be here. I don't want to. I don't want I can't to fight right. here. God, Have you seen the color so... of those curtains? That Have would... you seen this rug? That would. I can't ki- stand it. That would kill my car- my character concept. Even going outside, <laughs> basically, <laughs> because we joked about it when we were when I was getting into vampire, right? Like me, and my yep. mods were jo- joking about it on stream. Yep, and it was just like. My character would just be a Toriador that is basically just a VTuber that uses it the streaming to lure it in like prey. <laughs> <laughs> so even going outside is like, ugh, social interactions, my feng shui is off. <laughs> my fatal weakness. Uh, <laughs> this is not my favorite place. <laughs> uh, it's it's too open. <laughs> 
Uh, the I'm just imagining that, like this, like 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 you know, get toward or like going into Denny's or something. Uh, like that. I'd rather Pick, be in a picture, nice like, <laughs> picture the utter despair on a Toreador's face. It's 3 a.m. You're you're standing in a Denny's. <laughs> They're sold out of almost everything. All you all you could get is like <laughs> some toast and a milkshake. Oh. <laughs> like honestly, though, like I could really see like. Like any kind of like streaming vampire, because that makes a lot of sense. Because like when you've got vampires, they can't go out at night. Or sorry, they yeah. can't go out at the day. Yeah. And they also like generally speaking, they fall asleep. They go into like their torpor, whatever statey. Yeah. When they're when the sun when the sun's out. <laughs> so you you don't so you're so for for like streaming being nocturnal is like people are like oh whatever you're a streamer don't worry about it. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah that's actually a really interesting disguise. concept. I like yeah. that. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. And, like, yeah, like, in terms of, like, building, like, networks or, like, raising income or whatever, like, you know, a mar- you know, if the vampire can reach some level of su- success and, like, I mean, obviously the, the one big key flaw is that you're going to have to go outside to feed. Eventually. So, uh, <laughs> unless Eventually. you can arrange for delivery. I mean, there are vampires who subsist off blood banks. Now I've got, like, this weird, like, because, like... Grub hope for vampires. I know this is... I know this is I know this isn't true at all, but like, cause uh, it's there's the the VTuber Iron Mouse who was well known. She's got an immune deficiency. She yeah. receives plasma. <laughs> Thank you, anonymous. <laughs> Sorry, I have sacks in my head now. Awesome. Um, so, but she 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 gets like donations and and solicits donation of solicits for donations of uh, plasma because that's what she needs to receive to treat her her immune disorder and and to kind of like mitigate it. And now it's like, is she just actually a vampire? Oh my gosh. Oh, no. Is, she just, a, is, all this is she just a Torador <laughs> that just receives blood deliveries? Like, I know plasma is different from blood, but. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I'm just because also, don't think your Imagine powers Dora work. Dash tre- blood. <laughs> don't think your powers work through the internet. That's what you think. Yeah, it's blood I dash. I mean, <laughs> only if you think it does a dad hat. If you believe hard enough, I can <laughs> influence people through the internet with my Torador powers. I mean, I've I've heard some G some storytellers for um, vampire rule that dominate only requires a vocal component. So oh. as long as you can be heard, just get a really um, good microphone. <laughs> you yeah, get a good microphone. Get some ASMR going. You're set. Reaver, uh, Reaver asks. I mean, that's ultimately up to the storyteller because I've also heard doors. some storytellers say that you need eye contact. And voice in order for dominate to work, but I've also heard them saying no. You can do dominate over the phone, so why not do it over streaming? Yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, Reaver, my mod asks, Toriadors use mm. blood magic, right? Not not all Toriadors. There are only no. Certain... You're thinking of uh, sorry, actually, that's Tremere, and we're gonna get there. Yeah, Tremere, yeah. but there is there are sub six of Toriador that I know from a video. Mm, that it's possibly have a bloodline it. or something that yeah. branches over there. Yeah. One of the, I think it's one of the anti tribute ones, mm, but that's yeah. more of an advanced thing, I think. Mm. That's that that goes into Sabat stuff. We're not there yet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the Tremere then. <laughs> yep. So yep. Up next is the Tremere. So basically, do you want to be a wizard? <laughs> Consider do you want to be a wizard. <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> very much like like because the one of their one of their powers it's unique to the Tremere you don't see it in any other clans is basically blood blood rituals blood sorcery which is oh, the fis- what it says on the tip <laughs> is, it, yeah. is that what it's called vicissitude or something that is actually vis- the vis- yeah, yeah. yeah oh, vicissitude right. is like the skin uh, oh, that's, that's, skin that's, fle- that's flesh the flesh crack we'll get that's, there this, this, is more like, this is more like blood, blood, blood I gotta be a vampire blood <laughs> Vicissitude is gross, boy. <laughs> I don't look permanently angry, do I? Oh, I think it's just because your eyebrows are down. Oh. 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 Sasha's a very serious griffin, boy. Yes. <laughs> when we talk of vampires, yeah, so. she is very serious. I thought I, <laughs> thought I just looked determined. But oh, I, I, it's uh, we. I it's. The the the, uh, the 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 truth of the matter is is that Sasha's eyebrows don't get tracked very well because she she needs to wear her glasses uh, and so her uh, sometimes yeah. her, I should wiggle her... your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I see the wiggling. <laughs> I'm trying. 
it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. She's very focused. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. See there, I, don't I worry about it. It's all okay. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't think I looked slightly angry, but I'm no, sorry. No, you're okay. It's okay. You're okay, Sasha. Sasha's just very focused on what's going on. But yeah, sure. so the That's the other two powers so that uh, Tremere get is uh, Auspex, which again is the aura reading funness, and they also get Dominate. Because, you know, in addition to blood sorcery, let's also give them the, the ability just to control people. I mean, why not? <laughs> why not? But uh, the Tremere is one of those, like, rabbit hole clans, because... Um, in addition to normal vampire politics, there's also the Tremere politics. I think they have something mm. called like the pyramid or whatever. They have their own yes, pyramid hierarchy. scheme. The big old pyramid scheme about like, you know, service that you have to like you you every vampire is more or less in service to their sire, but like Tremere like go oh extra god. on it. Oh my god, the Tremere <laughs> the Tremere are just big connect. <laughs> yeah. They're just Tremere a multi level marketing scheme. <laughs> I had a lot That's of fun a... with, with my LARP Tremere. Yeah, That's and you, the Tremere you played in the Atlantic City game was also fun. The one that owned yeah. the gun store. And oh, actually, yeah. I mean a gun store. Not like the oh. gun store like your biceps. Hey. Hey. Oh. I like to think she was probably a bit ripped, but whatever. So, I mean, the so the rule for vampire is you maintain the physique that you had when you died as a, as a human. So yeah. was, and and she was ripped when she went into it. Is that Sorry? How- is that how it works? Like, if you go in with the physique you had, it doesn't grow mm. or decay. Correct. It just stays the way it was. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So, and so it's actually been a, a, a bit of a thing. The only that's why the quote unquote Zamisi flesh crafting is considered taboo. Um, <laughs> well, it's not. I wouldn't say taboo, but the idea is that they're the only ones who can make permanent changes to a vampire. Oh. Yeah, because otherwise, like, because like, say for instance, the um, at least how it was done in some other systems. I'm not too sure Vampire Fifth maintains it. Like, say for instance, if a vampire cuts their hair and then goes to sleep for the day and then wakes up, they wake up back with the hair as it was. Oh God! When they died, like you can yeah. style it and stuff, but it's always going to go back to what it was. So even if you like shaved your head, it would just be back the next day. Yeah, it just comes back. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, you could have different hairstyles like every night, yes. I guess, and test it out, but it's yeah. always just going to go back I mean, to whatever it was when you died. Forget about using horse hair for extensions. Just get a vampire to keep shaving their head every night. You'd make a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing Sasha. is that the stuff that comes off of a vampire either turns to ash Ooh. or it looks dead. Yeah. Um,. Hmm. Like or like it like decays very rapidly because I think it's like if you amputate a vampire or if like you like cut hair or whatever especially if the vampire is older it just turns to ash it's not mm-hmm. um, usable <clears throat> I see which is you know creepy yeah. so you just gotta hope you weren't having a bad hair day or whatever yeah the day you get <laughs> yeah I, I, embraced don't embrace me I don't look good today Can wait we do wait wait tomorrow? wait till tomorrow I'm gonna go get my yeah. hair did. <laughs> 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 oh, welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. back, 16 Bow. <laughs> I hope the stream is oh, no. not buffering anymore. Ooh, ooh. Her receding oh, no. hairline. Oh, yeah, ooh. you're gonna be you're gonna be bald forever. But yeah. uh yes, ooh, ooh, like cause I I do know that's like a like some people comment ooh, ooh when they've uh decided to create more like overweight uh characters ooh, ooh in vampire. This sounds really weird. <laughs> uh is that um, you end up with, like, regardless of their lifestyle choices after the fact, they're stuck like that, uwu, unless they find a Zimitsi to um, Fleshcraft. alter. And <laughs> the unfortunate yeah. thing is that if you're a Camarilla vampire, which we'll get into, <laughs> you're not allowed to. Finding a Zimitsi is going to be a lot of a very fun challenge, uwu. Oh, yeah. Zimitsi are part of the Camarilla, are they? Uh, d- I think it kind of depends on the edition. I mean, generally the Zamitsi tend to stay Sabat aligned, ooh, yeah. but ooh. there might there's be anti- some anti tribute. Anti- yeah, anti tribute of everything. Yeah. So, but usually the camera is like, ew, Zamitsi, go away. <laughs> <It's> stinky. <laughs> you have spikes where there's not supposed to be spikes, ooh. Those are spikes. <laughs> Those are my bones. <laughs> <laughs> my bones. Oh. That's just my cheekbone. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Ulu, 
Last but not least are the Ventwu. The Ventwu. 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 So the Ventwu are the basically capitalism vampires. Uwu. They are like, we are the woo-woos of all other vampires, and we are brainy and savvy, and you should do what we say. Ooh. Capitalism. Capitalism is Capitalism. great, woo-woo. So, woo-woo. basically, mad men, but if we vampires. <laughs> yes, yeah. woo-woo. Yeah. And their, their core powers are dominate, woo-woo, fortitude, woo-woo. and presence, woo-woo. So they, woo-woo. they can control others very easily. They can take punches in the face, woo-woo. And then they own rooms when they walk into them. Ooh woo. Rooms. Yes, rooms. Ooh. Robes. I, I will be up front, ooh woo. If you do not stop me, I tend to play vent woo. <laughs> if I nobody to... stops me, I'm going to be a vent woo. <laughs> no. Yeah. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping. Ah. <laughs> no, I might have my normal no, voice. No, but, no, yes, no. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, for Ventu mm-hmm. too. Yeah, the question was oh, Thank you very much for the gift subs, Food Man. Choo-choo. Oh, thank you. But, uh, thank you yes, we're much. just we're just talking about vampire today. We're we're not actually playing a game. Uh, maybe no. later, maybe. Yeah. But right all, the, now, all this talk about vampire though does make me want to. Play yeah, vampire. has yeah. awakened to the beast. Yeah. But yeah, I so want to be a vampire. <laughs> I want to be an uwu ventwu. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there, there are there are a couple more quote unquote clans. To discuss that are part of Vampire oh, Fifth. Yeah, uh, the thing Flora that... and Sasha, these I think might be more new to you. Yeah, there's something um, here called the Caitiff. Yes, the Caitiff, otherwise known as the I don't like oh, yeah. any of your clans. I just want to mix my own three powers. Yeah, oh. we had a couple of Caitiff in the last LARP game I was in, and they mm. were hilarious. Yep, they, yeah. they were. Basically I know of them. Their nose at everyone. Yes. <laughs> there are some circles who do not care for the Caitiff. Usually, the idea is that the generation of a <laughs> A caitiff is quite low, so the idea is that they kind of end up with like a weird mix of powers. But a lot of people complain that caitiff can be broken very easily because you're you can mix and match the powers as you see fit. Right. So they get a lot of munchkin ac- accusations. Munchkin. I, I have never I have never played with a caitiff, so I can't comment one way or the other. Yeah, I've never played in a game with a caitiff before. She's just looking at like the art, like the archetypes for caitiff, just like. Yeah. The whole unwanted child. Oof. That's not <laughs> yeah. good. But yeah, the the idea is that it's also like in the vampire world, it's a bit of a stigma to be caitiff because it means that, um, so vampire society is like Fight Club in that you're not supposed to tell other people about vampires. But how do you yeah. embrace other people if you don't tell them about vampires? Yeah. <laughs> So it's a bit of that. So the idea is that if your caitiffs usually have a, you know, a quote unquote thinner bloodline, a lower generation. So the idea is that someone's been embracing a little too much. Someone's been so it's, it's a got a bit wild. of a negative social stigma, along with also, the, I think, the quote unquote other last clan, which is the thin blooded, which is you don't even have disciplines. Your your blood is that thin. You're barely a vampire. You're, you're literally just. Not even you're not you're not even really a vampire. You're barely though. passing. <laughs> yeah, like you wouldn't even get powers from it, would you? You don't start with disciplines in Ooh. the thin blooded. Yeah. But the other idea is that you are not associated with the clan. I think you. I think there's like you get some bonuses about being blood bonded. Um, and I think also the idea is that um, what was it? Um, so there's something. So vampires are functionally walking corpses and anyone who examines you for more than five, you know, for, for any length of time is going to notice you're a walking corpse. <laughs> yeah. You can choose to expend some of your powers for something called blush of life, which allows you to fake being alive for a little while. And uh, like, so you'll have a, you'll have a heartbeat. You will appear to breathe oh. so on and so forth. Cause like the thing with the vampires is, um, you don't need to blink because you're dead. You don't have a heartbeat. You're dead. You don't. If you try and eat anything other than blood, you throw it up immediately because you don't have a digestive system anymore. You're not breathing. You're uh, not breathing. Painful. So the idea is that anyone who's paying attention to a vampire long enough is going to notice that you're not behaving human. So blush of life is a way to kind of fell uh, is to uh, is a way to kind of pass for a little while as more human. 
thin-blooded are considered to have blush of life always on because their their blood is that thin as a vampire that um they are quote unquote passing as mortal. Uh but <laughs> yes, yeah, vampire glamour. But uh yes, and uh, Bellamy has mentioned I, I know that's a common thing for a lot of Nosferatu is to have that kind of like rotting corpse smell. Um but yeah, the uh, but yeah, the, the the more or less the idea is that with vampire you uh, <clears throat> and especially like to other supernaturals, like I think like to werewolves, like you reek. Yeah, uh, vampires like are like e so easy to identify for a werewolf. Can't and then the werewolf eats you. One of my mods just threw something at me. I kind of have, oh. oh. have to kick his ass That's later. Yeah. Yeah, kick his ass. <laughs> kick your ass yeah. in the daddy's parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> one on one. <laughs> a true vampire game. A, a brawl in the daddy's parking lot. Let's go. Two Malkavians uh, square up in the daddy's parking lot. <laughs> uh, werewolves are much, much stronger. Yes. Generally in, in this setting anyway yes. than vampires are. Yes. Like if you get a, an elder vampire against a new werewolf, that that elder vampire is probably going to have an edge, but the general idea is an out of the box werewolf can beat up a mid tier vampire pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. Um, the the kind of like um, like if you're playing a World of Darkness game, usually there's like a, a balance between like social, political, and like combat can be quite lethal unless you're playing a werewolf. In which case, congratulations, you are the apex predator. Yeah. Just, I mean, obviously the idea is with, with when playing werewolf, yeah, you're the apex predator, but also you turn into a freaking werewolf. So have fun explaining that when you when you do that in the Denny's parking lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The werewolf <laughs> in the Denny's parking lot is much more conspicuous than the vampire in the Denny's parking lot. Yeah. Correct. But I mean, also like a group of vampires would have fare better against like a single werewolf. Obviously, I think yeah. it de it depends on your mix of yeah what you've got uh, so so why are we vampires i mean like ultimately it depends on kind of what kind of game you want to play like with werewolf you are probably looking at a more i don't want to say combat focused game but you are going to be looking at a game where combat tends to be the solution to problems yeah. because you are a werewolf and you can solve problems by basically <laughs> just bringing your fist down yeah <laughs> oh, you want to be a big strong werewolf oh you want to go beat up the worm oh <laughs> Yeah. Go fight something in the Umbra. Ow. Yeah. As, as uh, Reva just said, actually, two Toreadors square up in the Denny's parking lot. They both die because they're setting foot in the peasant pathway. <laughs> <laughs> also, I have a redeem I have to give here. So, uh, okay. yes. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Reva, you are my pog champ. Aww. Aww. Is my little pod <laughs> so um there are no big strong raccoons. <laughs> we've covered all the clans, but I guess I I guess I've we've we've mentioned a bit about the vampire society and politics, so I should probably take a bit of a step back and explain that. So uh the vampires, the whole idea is that um there's kind of more or less three quote unquote groups of vampires in terms of political philosophies. Uh, you have the Camarilla, the Sabbat, and the Anarchs. Uh, the Camarilla is very much your... Rule I want of, to play... The rule of law uh, types. The rule of law, yeah. So like, yeah. if you want to, you know, be part of the, you know, traditional system of vampires, um, the, it's the one, like, to be blunt, it's the one that the majority of vampires at least play, pay lip service to, that they have membership in. Um, they have regular meetings. They're t the different cities of that are maintained by the Camarilla each have a ruler called a prince, regardless of gender, the title is prince, um, who kind of like maintains the rules and the rule of law and things like that in those different territories. Uh, that is the Camarilla. They maintain the rules of the masquerade, which are, let me just actually get the They're rules the of the law, masquerade. Man. They're the law, man. 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 So don't reveal right. vampires exist as, as uh, much as you yeah, can. Yeah, there's, there's actually a few other rules of the masquerade. I'm just going to look them up because there's they're, there they are. I found them. So yeah, the first rule is 
we don't talk the masquerade. We don't talk about Fight Club. You don't tell other yeah. people that the, vampires the first exist. First rule of yeah. being a vampire is don't talk breaks. about being a vampire. Yeah, because like let's be blunt. Uh, if you've got a vampire who wants to, you know, inevitably maybe tell their family that they're a vampire. No. Or they're not supposed to, but they... Yeah. Mm, Sorry, family. Um, you get yeah. a lot of vampires who have what are called ghouls, which are basically servants, human servants that are kind of thralled to the vampire to, like, they feel compelled to do their bidding because they fed on the vampire's blood. So, and they kind of... Oh, yeah. A lot of people use ghouls to, like... You know, during the day, I need you to go to the bank and take care of my bank affairs because I'm a yeah. capitalist vampire and someone needs to do my banking. For <laughs> someone, me. yeah, the banks are all closed while I'm awake at night. I need you yeah. to go and do my finances for me. <laughs> so, congratulations, to, you get a ghoul. I need you to file my um, taxes. <laughs> I need yeah. to file my taxes. Sit down and me. file my taxes. <laughs> and then take this stuff to the post office and get me some. <laughs> I need new like, clothes. Go to the mall. You basically so, ghoul an accountant. <laughs> right. So uh, the the point is, this rule tends to br get broken a lot because everyone needs a human <laughs> to basically help them maintain. And if they if they want to maintain some semblance of life on the grid, be registered, file taxes, get money, all that shit. Congratulations, yeah. you need a ghoul. Um, so <laughs> rule number one tends to get broken. The next rule is called domain, which is oh, when you Elizabeth. yes question Ooh. yes from our dearest Bellamy. How do you create a ghoul? And what is the difference with creating a vampire? Okay, so the main difference is to embrace a human to become a vampire. Um, they have to drink your blood. So the vampire has to give their blood to the human, and then the human also has their blood drank. And the vampire also has to make a conscious effort. And um, in the case of mechanics, it's usually like expending permanent blood points yeah. in order to invest Ooh. into the, the mortal to become a vampire. So it's a conscious effort. It generally does not happen on accident. Now, sometimes yeah, the beast gets involved and shit happens yeah. by accident, but it, it's less likely to happen on accident than yes, intentionally. It, it, generally it, it does have, has to be a very intentional act by the vampire sire. A ghoul drinks the blood of a vampire, but the vamp but gets nothing in like they um, get some benefits. They tend to get like some little boost to stats um, and things like that, but they do not get blood in return in terms of being converted. Sometimes people will become thralls or ghouls with the promise of eventually becoming embraced. Uh, I mean, that arrangement is whatever the vampire and the human make. Um, and also, some ghouls don't realize they're ghouls, depending on how the vampire hands out oh, the yeah, blood. Yeah. If that, if you get what I mean, yeah. uh, we've had we've had some people talking about making blood popsicles or like whatever. <laughs> Listen, it was a great idea. <laughs> Not naming names. It was um, me. <laughs> but the idea is that a ghoul um, has suffered something called like it's basically they, it, but the blood becomes addictive to them. So that's generally how a vampire ensures loyalty of a servant. They will generally feed them blood. They become addicted, and. Mm -hmm. They stay loyal. It's yeah. like drugs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They get very slight, maybe some very slight powers. Mm -hmm. And also, I think they live longer. They yeah. stop yeah. aging. They look they're younger while they're getting yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 blood and stuff. Paid in turns. Oh, God, no. <laughs> they're, pa they're paid in blood, they, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, yeah. Paid, they're paid in blood. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they are paid in actual money if they're like an accountant ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> they may in fact be paid actually paid yeah they might actually get paid in money if yeah, you're you know yeah. ghouling them to do your taxes and shit <laughs> yeah or like yeah. <laughs> ghouling yeah. them to take care of your your house during the day or whatever do your, yeah, do your yeah. lawn care yeah. mm -hmm. make like, sure the petunias look good oh yeah, uh, yeah make sure what yeah. flowers turn out okay <laughs> but uh, the second rule of vampire of the kind of the camarilla of the masquerade is domain which is more or less Vampires are more or less expected to kind of stay in the domain where they are welcomed by the local prince. And if they need to move domains for one reason or another, or like maybe they're investigating something, maybe they're trying to track down a sabbat, or maybe they just don't like the current city they're in no more. Um, you have to seek permission of the prince of the new domain that you're going to, uh, because you can't just go there, set up shop and start eating people. That's, that's a no-no. You have to get permission. So 
So it's a, it's like when you move into a new area, you have to like just like, yeah. By the way, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here I am. That just and technically, rocked. if the prince tells you to leave, you have to leave. But... Well, well, that that does that does a lot for the holiday to be <laughs> pissed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, the next rule of vampires is progeny, which is more or less the rules about embracing another vampire. Again, not always followed, but technically <laughs> before you embrace a human to become a vampire, you're supposed to get permission from your prince. And if you don't get permission from your prince, the prince is allowed to kill both of you, yep. which is how bloodlines starts. Yeah. <laughs> For figure. those who are familiar with bloodlines, you've, you've run afoul of the rule of progeny. Yeah. Your hourly reminder to reinstall plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> Just when you're about to get your head cut off like McGill and Gorilla. Uh, the next tradition is called accounting. It is not like money accounting. The idea is that... Accountability. So yes, the idea is that if you embrace a vampire, until that vampire is considered a vampire adult and can function on their own, any fuck-up they make is your fuck-up. Oh, so it's like having a child. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Until your vampire is no longer, until your vampire child is no longer a minor, and that period can be as short or as long as the general vampire society continue considers it. Like it could go for hundreds of years if you've got a dumbass. If you got a dumbass, uh, si- uh, not sire. Don't, they don't uh, cop on quick. Your child. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're responsible for him for a long time. Well. <laughs> <laughs> And then the next... Oh, sorry, there's actually six traditions. My apologies. You have to Animal Crossing style introduce yourself to the to the prince. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is called hospitality, which is more or less when you go to a new domain, you're supposed to present yourself to the prince, but also the prince is not supposed to just kill you on sight. It's more or less the rules of don't be a dick. <laughs> The, the more general rules of societal hospitality. <laughs> yeah. yeah. More or less, if you're being treated with, if you're being treated politely by another vampire, maybe don't kill them. Maybe you have to be polite in turn. Salute. Not supposed. Mm-hmm. Keyword: not supposed to. A yeah, little bit of respect to. go like boat go a boat ways. <laughs> I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The last rule, which is definitely broken all the goddamn time. Destruction. Thou shalt yeah. not kill other vampires. Thou shalt not drink the blood of other vampires. Good Ooh. luck with that. Yeah. There's a whole mechanic called Diablery, which is also known as drinking the blood of vampires. Well. Uh-huh. <laughs> well then. <laughs> yes, Tom Nook would be a Ventru. No argument. Oh god, he yeah. would be. <laughs> Tom, Tom Nook is the biggest capitalist in existence. He would be How long has he been alive? <laughs> Tom Nook has been around Tom. for a suspicious amount He's of time. He's been using all those yeah. bells to buy blood bags. <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah. if you talk to the prince or whatever, or like a Camarilla traditionalist, yes, those rules are law. You talk to yeah. someone who, you know, it maybe is new or just has more of a looser interpretation. Yeah, they're just guidelines. So don't don't worry about it. It's just I a mean, guideline. I mean, yeah. if you really need Suggestion. to embrace this person, like may- maybe it was an emergency that you had to embrace this person. You didn't have time to go get the prince. I'm I'm sure he'll understand. I'm sure that prince won't like tear out your heart and drink your blood. Yeah. Uh, I don't worry about it. Sometimes but... it's easier to ask for Forgiveness than permission. Yep. Correct. Yep. But no, yep. Ad- Adhan asks, uh, I mean, do Camarilla vampires really de is a lot? I thought there was that was like the number one biggest sin. <laughs> it is. I'm oh, Diablery? Say, yeah. yeah. Diablery is. I'm not going to say it's not. And there's also Diablery stains a vampire when it's done in a way that those who know how to look can tell you've done it. So oh. it is generally considered a no-no. Um, but it doesn't mean people still don't do it. Right? They have a yeah. major plot hole with blood hunting. <laughs> because <laughs> that, you can de-ableize other vampires Does anybody will <laughs> I was like, Because, mm. I mean, let's put it this way. Mechanically speaking, as a vampire, you're going to hit a cap. The only way to get past your cap is to uh, <clears throat> do a diablery. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, sneak in a cheeky little Diablery somewhere. Uh, yeah. a, but like, say for instance, sees. like that <laughs> that power yeah. aspects I mentioned. Os- uh, anyone who's skilled in aspects can read can read a vampire and immediately know if they've done Diablery usually. So, <laughs> unless that vampire that did the Diablery also has aspects, in which case they could hide their aura, in which case aura fight. <laughs> or a fight. Or a fight. Or a fight. Trump, <laughs> at each other. Yeah. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> That's why everybody's meeting at Denny's. Yeah. <laughs> In the parking lot. The parking yeah. lot. I don't yeah. know if we actually said it because my my short term memory is like mm. shit. But diablery is when you uh kill and eat a vampire that's a generation higher than you. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so wait, like yeah, they're a generation older than it. you? Yes. Yeah. So the idea of a generation is how far you are removed from the original quote unquote vampire. I think a lot of people consider that. A lot of vampire historians consider that to be Cain, the the first murderer, if you want to go biblical. I, yeah, um, to, to, uh, to, use, <laughs> um, to use a term from, uh, I don't know if you ever heard, seen that YouTuber, uh, Seth Sintach, and his review of mm-hmm. uh, Bloodlines. Cain uh, disabled okay. his brother. <laughs> oh, oh no! Well played. Well played. Uh, I, so, I appreciate that. so like, say for instance, a first generation vampire would be quote unquote one that was embraced by Cain. Yeah, and the numbers go down. Most vampires start at about I think thirteenth or fourteenth generation, and usually like thin bloods are like sixteenth generation. Like that's why they're thin bloods because there's been a little too many generations. I think yeah. things got a little too weak. Things get a little weak. Quick I mean, yeah, I think generally when you're starting a game, what's the the range, I think, without having to... I think it's, I think it's like 14. I think. 14, but I think you can, like, pay a lot to start at a mm. higher... Yeah, yeah, you can buy like Mary. Yeah, higher yeah. generation. To get older blood, yep. To get an older vampire daddy. Or mommy. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can't, well, I mean, can't it depends on who hires you. Mommies or daddies. <laughs> Or whatever lies betwixt, if it's if it's maybe Zimitsi's involved. Don't worry about it. That's some kind of eldritch thing there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. We just keep that over there. Mm-hmm. Nope. We just don't talk about it. Oh, or about it. Nothing uh, to worry about. <laughs> so yeah, so you've got the Camarilla, which is a quote-unquote status quo vampire group. You have the Sabat, which also known as the Sword of Cain. Uh, which these are the quote unquote, if you want to be bad vampires, if you want to be evil, you play a Sabat campaign. Just don't Sabat. care about rules, whatever. Yeah, they basically. they do care about rules. They have a big structure of the, of you know the you know the Valdery, the the camaraderie. But, but it's also rules, fuck I you got money. mine. Yeah. But it's also it's, it's like forget about the Camarilla. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's the, the, the phrase, especially, it was a lot used a few times in Hunter the Parenting to pretty good effect. The sword of Cain falls where it pleases, which Ooh. more or less is the kind of tagline of the Sabbat of we do as we want. Yeah, there's no such thing as we, like, we the will masquerade. not be constrained by ideas of the masquerade yeah. or whatever. If I want to eat, tear out that human's throat, I'm going to tear out that human's yeah, throat. Like- I will have to bear the consequences of my action. Yeah, because it's like, but isn't I, but it I with the, the Sabbat, they, they <laughs> see themselves as the clearly superior like yes. beings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because they're not constrained by, by wet blanket rules. They don't have to worry about things like, you know. They don't have to worry about taxes. Yeah. <laughs> all, all my Sabbat <laughs> homies taxes, be committing tax them. evasion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Flora and Sasha and myself, we did play in a Sabat game. Yeah. Specifically an 80s themed Sabat game. Oh, that was oh. great. And, uh... Yeah, I think that's actually my favorite vampire game I've ever played in. Was it yeah. There was, um... <laughs> there was some interesting morality choices. Arf. That Oof. were... That were made. Arf. Arf. Listen. Um, yeah. I made my decisions. I, I, <laughs> well we had uh well there was flora arf who yeah. decided to um bleed entire people dry and collect the blood in plastic bags arf and stick it in the freezer uh yes blood blood blood. Arf. Arf. Yeah. 
There, there was this the security guy in the mall parking lot. I had to kill him, but I mean, it was a waste. She wasn't hungry. Um, Our f- I wasn't. We were, yeah. we. I think we had just like we had eaten mm-hmm. earlier, so nobody was hungry. But it was a waste to get rid of all that blood. So I put it in a bunch of plastic bags. <laughs> we so brought it back to the it. house we were staying at, and then we yeah. made some blood popsicles. It was pretty epic. Just, just drags you the should've... body off, and you're just like, "What are you doing there? Uh, saving it for later." <laughs> uh, I, I think I actually kind of, did. I did I decapitate him? I don't. I, 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 was, I don't think my oh, character sorry, was there. Sorry, the sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. were saying sorry. The sorry, whole time. I was just like sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. As I was and like decapitating came back him. And everybody was like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> um. So, Alosin, you uh. Uh, that was a question oh, was also asked earlier, but I, I don't think you were here yet, Arf. Um, generally speaking, animals cannot be made into va- into vampires, Arf. However, they can be made into ghouls. So they can be made into servants of the vampire by drinking some vampire blood, Arf. Laura was um, always a bird or hobo in vampire. The game, we <laughs> had a doctor who decided to get a bunch of leeches made into ghouls. Because <laughs> oh, that yeah. was the idea. <laughs> I'd like Why did you remind me of that? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. It is a thing. Yeah, they had a bunch Generally, of Generally, if, you, if, if you're if you're done dealing with morals for the day, Arf, place the bot. That kind of just gives me an idea. A, a leech is very tidy, but if you have a lot of them, fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, um, if I recall correctly, the leeches got bigger after being blood bonded. Oh god! Oh, yes, yeah. I think blood bonding can make uh, if you do it with animals, it can make them much larger than they usually are. I don't know why, but now I'm just getting an idea of a vampire that makes a bunch of cats their ghouls and just turns into the yeah. crazy cat lady from Simpsons, just trolling oh my god, cats that at would... people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've given Sasha mind. her next character concept. Arf. <laughs> Oh my god, the crazy vampire cat lady? Are you kidding me? I'm I'm already there. <laughs> Just that troll. Already the there. I don't need my powers. I have cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also um, the animalism power line. If you want to, if you don't want to go to the trouble of ghouling many many cats or many many rats or many many leeches, there is also the animalism power line, which um, allows you to just use basically a version of dominate. To get animals to do your bidding and let you oh, t- yeah, let you true. speak to the let you Doctor Doolittle them. <laughs> Doctor Doolittle. Oh, God, that's amazing. Uh, either way, that's as long as I get to throw cats, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the they just come last... back. It's fine. They'll just like walk back <laughs> over and like hop onto oh your God, shoulder. I want to r- ride cats now. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I guess they could get large enough to ride on. I re- oh my God. Was there? I don't remember where this was, but I seem to recall there was a Sabat campaign that ended up with us going to the zoo. Oh no. Going to the zoo. Because someone wanted to like blood bond a bear or a lion or something. Uh, that was not a game I played in, but that sounds certainly sounds like something <laughs> someone would do. <laughs> Maybe I read about it. Maybe it wasn't a campaign I was in. I don't yeah. know. The only Sabat campaign I've ever played in is uh <laughs> is the one that we played in, but that, that absolutely sounds like something somebody would do. Let's go to the zoo and blood bond all of the apex predators. I'm gonna blood bond an elephant, motherfucker. <laughs> Hippo. Hippo. Hippos are the world's deadliest no. predators because they just fuck you up for fun. They don't oh, even yeah. eat you. you. You don't mess with hippos. No. You uh, you ghoulify a pack of emus. <laughs> oh. Looks like, look, looks like Fu Manchu has got uh, oh. their first uh, oh, that's, concept for a vampire. That's the that's the cat lady from the that's Simpsons. That's the cat lady. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's her. That's her background. Well, there you go. Uh, the people. last quote unquote political faction of Vampire the Masquerade is called the Anarchs, which is also known as the I don't want to join the Camarilla and I don't want to join the Sabbat. No, thank you. I don't want to deal with e- any of this. I'm Both of you suck. No, thank yeah. you. I'll I'll be over just here. do whatever. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the idea is that they're supposed to be kind of like you know, again, it takes its name from like anarchists. So the idea is you know, fuck the system, fuck the man. But you also just have some vampires who are just like, I just, I just want to be left alone, please. Yeah, I'm just gonna go over there and live in my cave. Please don't bother me. Please don't bother me. 
I am I am a gangrel living off the grid. I am going to just dig myself a hole and live in this hole oh, no. and emerge every once in a while mm-hmm. to eat to maybe, you know, have some some cows for blood. Just leave me alone. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye <funny>. forever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why forever? Yep. <laughs> but yeah. So those are the kind of the major quote unquote political factions. I would say the majority of vampire played has been Camarilla based games, or at the very least, like mix of Camarilla and Anarch, because um, in a vampire campaign, generally the group of player characters who are working together are something called a coterie, uh, right. which is more or less an agreement. The it's recognized within Camarilla society. Um, as, you know, these group of vampires are loyal to one another, they're going to look out for one another, they work together for one reason or another. Um, sometimes they're just created by people, like, who have similar, you know, they, they've met together, maybe they all have the same, if you want to do, like, a single clan game, maybe they all have the same sire. Um, or maybe the prince was like, I need a task force, congratulations, you fuckers work together. Oh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, it, it, you could. That's a lot of those things that you know when you're dealing with character creation and things like that. You can kind of yeah. like work out what, why these people tolerate one another night after night. Yep. Welcome back, sixteen bow. But uh, and I mean, yeah. the sabbat enf- enforce it through other means. Uh, I mentioned something other called the valdery, which is the idea is, um, I've 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 mentioned the term blood bonding a few times, which is the idea that vampires that drink one another's blood but don't go far enough for di- diablerie can create something called a blood bond, which is more or less the vampires feel compelled to be loyal or nice to one another, which is how the Sabbat kind of maintains some semblance of order by yeah. the Valdery, which is basically forced blood sharing among yeah. what they would call a coterie. <laughs> this um, is our get along blood bond. This, this is our get along yeah. blood bond. So we maybe don't kill one another in a fit of rage. Um, yeah. You kind of start play with a blood bond to your sire, because congratulations, that's how you got here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, and I think the Tremere enforce it even more, if I recall correctly. That's part of the whole pyramid I think thing. So. Is yeah. That you end up pretty blood bonded to those <laughs> higher to the, the clan. <laughs> basically. Babe, yeah. you drank my blood, please respond. Please <laughs> respond. <laughs> I shall drink my blood, Ryan, please respond. <laughs> I embraced you into my bloodline, please respond. <laughs> oh god, I, I could see that, I'm pretty sure I've seen that concept where you have basically a stalker vampire who embraces the oh. target, their fixation. Oh god. And be like, you're stuck with me now. Oh, like, no. oh. forever. Like, that is oh so god. Wrong. It 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 is wrong, but congratulations, it's a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you question start thinking about though, the Diablo, right? Question, that, yeah, that, question though on that kind of point. Yeah. What if the sire dies, does anyone they embrace die as well? No. Okay. No. So if something were to happen where say you had that kind of scenario. Yeah. And the the embracee inadvertently killed the sire they would not die correct no they'll be fine it, yeah it's, the, it's not a you have to kill the head vampire situation is, i mentioned before that when vampires ghoul humans there's an addictive quality to the blood to to the blood that that's what kind of keeps the human loyal to that vampire um blood bonds among vampires can also have a similar effect um generally speaking you're you're going to be not feeling compelled to accidentally or otherwise hurt another vampire that you're blood bonded to yeah but if if it does end up happening either by yourself or maybe by another vampire who knows um there is kind of that but there's going to be a withdrawal period is the best way to put it um in, in depending on how strong the blood bond was if it was like there's like i think with vampire like things are done in dots so like usually between one and five, it's a, if it's a one dot blood bond, it was, it's on the weaker side. You might have a rough week as you, as the blood kind of works its way out of its system and you fi- and you're fine. Five dot blood bond, however, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're going to be having some nasty withdrawal as you come down from that bond. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. It's going to, it's going to feel like a shitty ass breakup. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's not like I wanted to embrace you. Be like <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's a dairy you. vampire. I didn't want. It's yeah. not like I wanted to embrace you or anything. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, to some degree, the uh, vampire can be. There is a lot of vicious cycles of addiction and codependency. Like oh, I would yeah, say, yeah. vampire is a game that you really do need people that you are comfortable with to role play and play the game with. I don't recommend it for randoms. um for randoms at least not without you know a good session zero to kind of like put down some boundaries especially to be blunt there are lots of instances where dom uses of dominate can put people in the oh no i'm not comfortable with that zone right <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean is world of darkness in general is a yeah, yeah. is a much more uh i um, guess a, adult Situation, and I don't mean yeah. in like a, you know, like a sexy way or anything. But yes. yeah, like uh, in the in the LARP I was in there, which was uh, actually run by like at first a Canadian network that has now spread into the U.S. But anyway, um, mm. they set up a full on consent uh, policy. So like if mm. somebody's like this scenario that we're in is making me uncomfortable for whatever reason. I would like to back out and the part of the and, and the policy ensures that whoever's uh, left will work around it or like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable. Can we fade to black? And that way, whatever's happening, you know, in story will still happen, but the characters don't have to play it sort of a thing or yeah, or stuff like that. It, it really uh, and there will be like, you know, if something if everybody knows that something potentially problematic is coming up, uh, you could actually have like a a discussion beforehand to make sure everybody's comfy and how do you want to play this like do you want to fade out do you want to do the whole thing do you want to like mm -hmm. and so um yeah or you just do yeah. like a and then this happens and we move on yeah 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 I, I i do find it kind of funny that for a lot of people uh who like you have a lot of the quote unquote the edgy teenagers that entered vampire either through the larp scene or through the tabletop and meanwhile you're dealing with some pretty like Heavy stuff. You know, m m heavy, mature topics that I'm pretty sure from some of the stories that I've heard of, like, friends going to vampire LARPs were not handled in the best of ways. Oh, yeah. And, like, yeah. Certainly yeah. in the pre, the, in the years before the the concept of a session zero or what have you. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know, I know I personally have walked from, it wasn't a vampire LARP, it was a werewolf LARP, but I've, I've walked from LARPs that ultimately would have benefited from probably a session zero uh, yeah absolutely in hindsight yeah, absolutely. That yeah, where it's like i'm not yeah. i'm not comfortable here i'm i'm, I'm yeah. out <laughs> yeah and i i mean no no yeah. group run by human beings is immune to misuse of rules or mm -hmm. people getting away with things they shouldn't be getting away with but as a as a whole the larp i was in actually did really well with awesome it. yeah it it can so. be done well, and like ultimately it comes down to communication and also to respecting like as like um, there was one thing I saw. There's a convention. I don't know if it still runs since the pandemic, uh, but there's a convention uh, that does role playing in southern Ontario. It's called Phantasm. And they had a rule called the X rule for their kind of like drop in and play tables. Um, and it ran anything from like D&D &D to, you know, vampire, whatever, like whatever they could get storytellers to come play to come run. Uh, tables for and it was again like you know you drop in with a character you, you you pick up and play you go with whatever that storyteller is doing and they had a rule where they would basically put an x in front of every player on a piece of paper and the idea is if, if something was straying into basically territory you weren't comfortable with for one reason or another you hold up the x you don't even have to explain why it's bothering you oh yeah, Just yeah, yeah. hold up the yeah. x and say no i'm not good with this whatever it is and the storyteller and the and the players have to pivot. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 also, you know, check in and make sure you're okay. So like I mean that's I think that was also a, a pretty good system. And cuz especially like with a convention, you don't necessarily have time for a session 0 to go yeah. through, you know, what is and isn't okay. So It it, it yeah, it, you do have to be really careful cuz especially like with dominate yeah. as I said, like it's a power that can compel people to to do things they don't want to do and like i've seen campaigns that have ruled dominate on npcs is fine dominate on pcs is a hard no do not use the power on another player yeah so definitely uh in as teacup cup said enthusiastic consent is important oh yeah absolutely definitely. yeah because like 
vampire can be a really interesting fun game like who 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 doesn't like the idea of exploring their dark side who doesn't yeah. like the idea of being able to kind of play in that sandbox where it's like in my day-to-day life i can't go around murdering people i can't go around indulging <laughs> in terrible capitalism ideas i can't go around blood bonding an army of cats yeah or at least you shouldn't <laughs> well, so, you should definitely not go around and try blood bond an army of cats yeah. <laughs> so i mean you can it's kind of sometimes fun. Like, 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 you know, a lot of people are like, you know, why the hell would you play a Sabat game? You're an awful person. Sometimes that can be kind of fun to explore. Sometimes like, you, as I have said, sometimes you just want to get the evil ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes, you know, you're, you're playing Mass Effect and you're like, maybe I do want to shove that Krogan yeah. off a cliff. Yeah. Or, or sometimes playing... I want to be the bad guy. Or you play an Undertale and you always go genocide, row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, sometimes you want to explore things you can't necessarily do otherwise, and and vampire is definitely a setting that allows for that. Um, but yeah, you also you're playing with other people, and sometimes there are lines you don't cross with with other people. Yeah. So, especially people you aren't, <laughs> you know, you you might not know otherwise. Like if it's yeah, a, yeah, like yeah, a random group or mm-hmm. whatever. Because I'd be like, we've been playing uh, games together for. I don't even want to say how many years, but uh-huh. Big number. I, I mean, I, I think we have a, you know, a very good idea of, you know, where, where our own boundaries are. Yeah. But yeah, you, you don't get often. that with, you know, random people. Mm-hmm. So. And, and yeah. even then, like, I know with some of our more recent campaigns, there's still been, there's still has been a session zero because like people's yeah. boundaries can also change. Yeah. Things time. can change yeah. too. Like, yeah. We've um, often done a consent checklist before we started a tabletop game. Mm hmm. Uh, which I, I really like because yeah. it addresses sensitivities before they become a problem and work yeah. and allows the GM to plan ahead and work around anything that might be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Oh no, 16, no. Oh no, 16, bro. <laughs> no. And I mean, yeah, Lena, that, that, that's also that true. Like, um, yeah. yeah, not everybody yeah, wants to play it. Yeah. Not everyone wants to play a vampire, not everyone wants to explore their dark side, and that's that's fine. Yeah, don't, don't and I mean, I mean, you can still have a vampire game that's not like super grim, dark, serious yeah. either. Yeah, like, like to, when we say all this, like it, it doesn't mean it. Every game has to be like, yeah, you know, grim, yeah. dark, whatever. Like I would like, you say, can still have a somewhat lighthearted vampire yeah. game. Like yeah. I would say, the Atlantic City campaign, uh, for example, um, the vampires. I would say that the vampires of our 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 player character Coterie, there was a mix um in terms of moral moral ground but like for the most part you know they weren't you know when they were feeding on humans they weren't killing they were aiming for non-lethal solutions where possible you know like it, the, the the idea with vampire is that like in some respects every vampire starts out with good intentions yeah i don't have to i don't have to feed to kill i can i can i can live with this i can i can hold the beast at bay it is in some respects, a slippery slope, which certainly did come up in the Atlantic City game. Like the biggest example I can recall is um, our coterie decided to make a play to have one of our members become prince, uh, specifically a Ventru who owned a casino mm-hmm. uh, and was like a big like capitalist thing. Uh, I, this is actually a mm-hmm. game I was not playing a Ventru in. This was not my character. Uh, I was playing a... We're playing a Ventru. I wasn't playing a Ventru. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my Funnily god. enough, I was playing uh, a clan that does not appear in 5th edition, or at least does not appear in the default 5th edition, which is, I think it's been renamed uh, an Asimite. Uh, the, the, it's a, basically oh. assassin vampire. Yeah, stealth, yeah. stealth assassin vampire. Anyways. Um, so the Ventru of that group, he was making a play for Prince, and we were all supporting him. And he got betrayed really badly. So the idea was the one of the other candidates for Prince uh, owned access to uh, the hospital and controlled basically the blood supply if you wanted to go through blood banks and not mortals. And he was given the suggestion to have the CDC come <laughs> and investigate the blood because it may have been tainted by like illnesses. Very like a this was pre-pandemic by Baron Vine. Um, so he did that, not realizing he was being played at the time because. Now, now the bloods, you know, you have a, you basically have a business that's being poked at by the government, by, you know, humans. And it also turns out the CDC in this campaign setting was also infiltrated by the Sabbat. So now the Sabbat are in the city. Oh, no. Oh, wow. And yeah. 
you know, basically you have a blood source that's now unusable. Um, and you basically had a lot of other people going like, that was not okay. Like, like basically people, people that, that backlash onto him when it was discovered, he was the one that made the call because the person who suggested it and that he, that he kind of like had facilitated basically turned on him and said, I did it on his orders. <laughs> it was his. And when he found out he got played, he failed his frenzy check. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so yeah. at the time when he learned that he had been played, the only other person in his off in his casino office was his personal human lawyer that had been ghouled to him. And he was he basically he was like, Roll for your frenzy check. You are you are angry. The beast is angry. You've been played. You've been betrayed. Beast and he's beast. like, Yeah, you're right. He rolled, he failed the frenzy check. The GM mm-hmm. faded to black. And he said, You come to there is nothing left of your lawyer. There is blood all over the room. Security is coming in. They don't know like what's happened. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Yes. And yeah, like this was like up until this point, like this was a well-intentioned, like he had, did not had, he had, he had been passing his frenzy checks. He was well-mannered. He was polite. He treat like he, he, his casino had a union. He was a leftist vampire people. Yeah. Unions. <laughs> but in vampire it all fell apart when yeah. one bad frenzy check damn yep. and at that point he rolled with it he rolled with the slipping he rolled down this he we started slipping down that slope taking more and more extreme measures because he lost and in some respects he lost that kind of like tether to his humanity that lawyer that kind of kept him grounded and he got worse from there and that's that's in, it's narratively that's interesting Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool. That or that sounds yeah. cool. I, I was yeah. obviously playing in that game, but that sounds really neat. And and he, and he had to deal with all the consequences of trying to clean this up without breaching the masquerade. Yeah, like to some degree, he obviously has people loyal to him within the casino. He you know he had the means and was able to kind of figure it out. But that lawyer is gone. That person, that voice to kind of remind him, you can't do that. Oh no, that's gone. Yeah. My moral Damn. compass has been yeah, his, destroyed. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, it's a whole yeah. thing. Like, it was, it was, and I mean, ultimately, like, it was a failed bid for Prince, and, like, a lot of people kind of tag it to that moment. That betrayal, and then the loss of his lawyer. That kind of, like, ultimately screwed him over for his bid for Prince. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, the road to hell paved with good intentions, yeah. yeah. Uh, can vampires get sick? Um, for the most part, No. Like, say, for instance, if you drink blood from a person with a cold, no, you're not going to get a cold. (laughs) Um, There is some, there are some storytellers that I've seen rule that certain illnesses can be transmitted via blood. Like, I've heard some GMs, like, say, for instance, more recently say COVID is transmissible by by drinking blood. I, I don't know. That's that's a very storyteller dependent. I yeah, would say, I, I think the, that's the sort ruling. of thing that uh, most people leave up to like a storyteller's yeah. discretion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the general accepted rule, however, is that any substances in a human system will be transferred, and sometimes that is, say, for example, for some Torador, that's the preferred method of feeding. Because, yeah. like, say, for instance, if a vampire ingests weed or booze, nothing <laughs> happens. They'll throw it up. Well, they can't. They're 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 a walking corpse. However, if they drink the blood of someone who's high or drink the blood of someone who's drunk, high. then they get yeah. the high, then they get drunk as a result. Uh, so that is, um, for some Torador, even just other vampires, that, that, that can end up being their preferred method to uh, <clears throat> maintain the fix. <laughs> um, there's also, I've heard some storytellers have ruled that drinking the blood of other supernaturals also has an effect. So like, say for instance, if you're a maybe a particularly powerful vampire or a particularly lucky vampire, and you get to drink the blood of a werewolf. Ooh. Ooh. I've seen yeah. rulings like, oh, you get some free dots in animalism for a little while because you pick up the shape-shifting while that blood's yeah. in your system. Or you just maybe get some free extra strength levels for a little bit while that blood is kicking around because guess what? You got, va- you got werewolf strength for a little bit. Um, I've seen, like, if you drink the blood of a mage, you pick up some temporary auspects. Because you're seeing in colors now. Oh, all the pretty <laughs> yeah. colors. You can, you can hear the colors, etc. Yeah, yeah. It's like it makes um, think, like, I don't know if it's like a thing that's only with the with bloodlines, like as a thing. Hmm. 
I think was it was a Tremere or something like one of the higher born clans. Like they had a, like an adverse reaction to drinking commoner blood. That's Ventru, actually. Oh, that's, that's Ventru. Ventru's bane. Uh, Ventru, the capitalist vampires, um, have what is called a preferred feeding source, where uh, oh, where yeah. they don't drink their preferred feeding source. They actually have to make a roll, or they'll throw it back up. <laughs> uh, so, like, say for instance, you could have a vampire that's like, "I only drink from virgins." If they don't drink from a virgin, <laughs> they have to make a check, or they throw it up. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be that specific. I've seen like. You know, I only want clean, you know, I'm a veteran who only wants clean blood. So if they, you know, ha maybe have a bad night and they have to drink blood from someone who's maybe like unhoused or what have you. Or a drug addict. Uh, or a drug addict. Again, they have to make that check to keep it down. And like, say, for instance, a lot of Ventru as a result can't drink animal blood because that is a lot of vampires who don't want to, you know, go to the dark side will be like, I'll just drink blood from rats or cats or cows like i just won't drink human blood and that is generally speaking for ventru never an option because you generally speaking don't get a ventru who's like my preferred blood source is cows <laughs> <laughs> i mean i guess it would ha be handy if they wrote if they wrote like a cattle business <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, <laughs> or it, it, it would be like if to... they were if they had to pick an animal it would be like some super rare exotic mm. endangered animal like i, I only drink the, the blood, blood of like a cat. <laughs> of an endangered yeah. like falcon or something. <laughs> I only drink the blood of like a tiny mm. tamarind monkey only found in Southeast yeah. Asia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, it is something you're supposed to work out with your storyteller at the beginning. If you're playing a venture, what your quote unquote what your preferred blood source is. Um <laughs> only drink blood from dragons. No. Oh no. I only drink oh, no. only <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so, Losin apparently only drinks A, B plus blood. I mean, yeah, you could also make your pickiness be a specific type of blood. Um, yeah. But, Better hope that type uh, of blood's around. Blood from a or yeah. pick, a, pick a common one. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, uh, Safe. yeah, it, it, like because the idea is like every clan, clan's got their thing. I, honestly, I think that sometimes that blood restriction one is quite punitive, depending on what the player goes for as their preferred blood source. Because, yeah. like... Maybe you could end up with like, you know, situations where it's like, congratulations, there's like none of that here. Have fun. Yeah. Have I fun with your have... imported blood. Yeah, you're going to have to yeah. import your blood. Yeah. It's like, it's not like you could tell what somebody's blood type is by looking at them. Well, funnily enough for Ventru, um, I guess to mitigate the bane, uh, they, did, they do actually have, you can do a role. Um, oh, do they? They can do a role to basically kind of read if a person is con is their preferred. Type. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I've never played um, a venture. So the, I, guess, I guess the idea is that if you're going to drink blood, that's going to make you throw up. At least you know in advance. Fair. Yeah. Yes, it, that is specifically the limit. It's only Ventru that suffer that bane. If you're playing any other clan, you can drink blood from whatever source. Uh, it is noted that when drinking from animals, you get like you have to drink more blood. To get what you would get from a human, so it's like uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to phrase this, but it's like a diminishing return when you're drinking from not human sources. Can you kamikaze by drinking poison before they drink your blood? Um, I don't know. I I I would see. I would. I think that would be a storyteller ruling. I'm not. I wouldn't make that. a hard rule on that. It would be interesting. Uh, so the. When the, in the World of Darkness setting, there's a group called Hunters, and Hunters are kind of meant to be the mortals who have realized what's going on and are trying to fight back. Um, and that's kind of like the... I don't want to call it the hero setting because, you know, those who fight monsters. But... Because um, they may not necessarily I, be, would be an interesting. That would be an interesting yeah. strategy I could see a hunter trying to employ to see if it would work. Being like... Yeah. We're not. We're not. Maybe we're going to fight this vampire group. We may not come out of it alive, but we'll make sure that if they get us, they go down with us. Type of thing. Like a pure uh, garlic specifically is is confirmed not to work on vampires in this setting. Although I will say it is a it is a flaw you can pick. Oh uh, yes, yes. You actually yeah, it is an extra effect. flaw you can yeah. take. Yeah. By default, a vampire isn't does it have issues with yeah. garlic? By Aside default, from just no. Aside from the regular issue that if a, if a vampire isn't using blush of life and eats food, they will throw it up. Uh, back onto the point a... of, I think, Sorry. was it the, the, you know, the beast inside? 
Yeah. Uh, Anha brings up a thing here called Golconda, some kind of like state of enlightenment about overcoming the beast. I've, I'll, I'll acknowledge I'm not very familiar with that. It sounds a bit like the Coils of Blood thing from Nuwad. Uh, but I mean, there, there are vampires who kind of like, I think kind of maintain that philosophy. The idea is that you can reach an agreement oh, with that... your beast or something like that. Um... Sorry, the Golconda thing. I think that was the Salubri thing, wasn't it? Oh, maybe. Salubri. Ooh. Salubri is another clan that ha- didn't make it into fifth, or at least not in def- because I know like they've released other books for vampire since vampire yeah. fifth edition. So there's like Salubri are kind of like the special rare super clan of vampires. They have like a third eye on their forehead. Yeah. That oh. opens when they get embraced. Yeah. And, when we were uh, that game we were talking about before the, the Sabat game, I was a Salubri yes. anti tribute. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. She was a special snowflake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's one of those ones you're supposed that. to. It was it was a shovel head situation. I know. Yes. I I'm being I'm being cheeky. I sh- I realize I should. Pro- Can vampires have children? No. Absolutely no. They're, cor- they they're walking call- corpses. They cannot have children. They do call the people they embrace their child though. Child correct. with an E because they're special. Yes. yes, that is correct. Yes, the the idea of a vampire family is your vampire mommy or daddy is the vampire that embraced you. Mm. Yeah. But they, no, if you, like, my understanding is, I think it got asked, like, if a vampire embraces a pregnant woman, what happens to the child? They basically asked the Blade question from Mar- from Marvel's oh, Blade. God. They asked the Blade question, what happens in the world of darkness? And I think they said the child will not survive. Yeah. If, if, a, woman, if a pregnant woman is embraced, the child does not survive. And like, and, and if somehow the child does survive, like maybe it's maybe like maybe the, the the mother is like nine months pregnant at embrace, the child comes out human, not vampire. Mm-hmm. I think. You know, yeah, I, definitely I don't, an I don't think, <laughs> but definitely, but, but but definitely don't. I don't, don't think the salubri stuff has been brought into five e yet. I wouldn't be surprised because I think the salubri most is... recent book that was updated for five e was Hunter. Yes, yeah, because the yeah right now in Vampire Fifth, there the, there's only two of the lines available: Vampire and Hunter. Which a lot of people were surprised that Hunter was because it's usually va- Werewolf yeah. that uh, follows Vampire, and Werewolf is coming out this year. So I don't think it's, it's just Hunter that's available. You get like, there is a book for playing the Inquisition, apparently. That's technically Vampire still. Oh, is it? Yep. I thought that, I thought like Inquisition are like you know human vampire hunters or like like Again, an organization. Well, then it would be a subset of Hunter. Ah. Uh. I guess what I mean to say is it might be like a specific campaign setting, uh, but it isn't a separate like creature of the night type. Oh, I get you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, Blade, I, hey, no complaints. I like Blade. The Blade movies, maybe not the third one, but the other Blade movies, they're pretty good. Oh, no, 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 no Blade Tri- okay, Blade Trinity did have some redeeming qualities. I mean, it did have, it did have it had Ryan um, Reynolds. Yeah, it had Ryan Reynolds. And he was pretty so. funny in <laughs> it. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but Blade Two was always going to be my favorite. I remember reading some interviews that Ryan Reynolds did for Blade. I think it's called Blade Trinity, and he was like, yeah. "Filming that movie was very surreal because apparently, like, a really bad cold and flu was just circulating the entire time." Oh God! Among the cast and crew, so like, you know, you'd get over it, but then you'd catch it again because someone else already has it because it's a, you know it's a relatively closed set or whatever, right? Yeah, and they said. You know, he he's. I think he says something like that. He doesn't remember parts of filming that movie, <laughs> Will, because they were all like they were all just high on so much like cold and flu medication to just get themselves through the day, Uwu, that none of them remember what they were doing. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, yes, you can, you can really feel that when you're watching that movie, <laughs> <laughs> Uwu. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, well, werewolfism is considered, uh, if I recall correctly, at least in Werewolf 20th va- edition. I have, I don't know how they're going to treat it in 5th edition, Ulu. You were born a werewolf or you're not, but yeah. you have to wait till, like, mm. werewolf puberty, Ulu, to become wolfy, Ulu. Yeah. yeah. It's so not like, like the like a a werewolf bites you when you become a werewolf situation. Yeah. yeah. 
you're either born with it or you're not. And then you got to wait for the right triggering experience, Uwu, to get transformed in furry. <laughs> oh no, no, it's Vincent Price, Uwu. Oh, Vincent. It's the, the thing that gets it's, it's the thing that gets us a copyright claim in Russia, Uwu. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> wait, Vincent Price gets you a copyright claim in Russia? Yes, yeah. Russia only. Uwu. That is very silly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's very strange. It's very silly. I don't get it. Uwu. Yeah. Uh, well, but yeah, but what? I guess just to take a little bit of a, a step back. So yeah, if from from twentieth edition, the kind of like different flavors of supernatural is you have vampire, which was like the first one. It's the most popular one. Uwu. Then you have werewolf, which is werewolves. Uwu. Then you have mage, which is you're a wizard. Pick your flavor of wizard. Uwu. Um, and then you have um. Hunter, which is you fight the creatures in the dark. There's kind of two versions of Hunters, Uwu. You either have mortals who just know what's going on and, you know, they get guns and stuff. Like, it's very more grounded, Uwu. Like, you don't have any powers. But then there's also, like, a hunter that's, like, chosen by God. You have a flaming sword. Go go fight uh, the vampire like with crusader. your flaming sword. <laughs> You're a crusader now. Um, that one is interesting because it's, like, when you awaken as a hunter, Uwu, like you get like a power set based on like, like say for instance, like it's like you could either be an Avenger or a martyr or an innocent or what have you, Uwu. And the idea is that your power set is based around like how you deal with the supernatural, Uwu. And it's like, you kind of like hear the voice of like whatever passes for a God in the world of darkness being like, get those evil things. They cannot... They cannot be allowed to stand in this world. They bad. Um, so yeah, there's there's a uh, hunter Uwu. Um, there's a, there's a few other ones like oh, so there's also changeling, which is you want to be a supernatural but fey. Ah. Um, and then you want to be Elizabeth. No, I'm okay. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are a fey bantry. It's Uwu. I, I can't argue. Just so what my chat just is so one version of Hunter is basically being the one sewer worker in the Imperial City in Warhammer Fantasy that's like, holy <laughs> fuck, there's rap people in here. <laughs> basically Uwu. Like I mean, Hunter is very much a I don't want to say fatal, um Uwu. I'm gonna stop Uwuing. Um You are dealing essentially with you know, the 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 theme of those who fight monsters. So generally speaking, how much of a slippery slope? Because like, say for instance, you could be dealing with, you know, maybe a group of vampires that legitimately don't kill, that are benign, that are Just for all kinds of purposes, <laughs> minding their own business. They, they, you know, they feed on the rats. They aren't hurting anybody. They don't attack anyone. They don't, they don't yeah. attack anyone. They stay in the sewers. And then you have the question but, of, do we mm -hmm. kill them or not? Yeah, you and you have that kind of question, but also like with Hunter, it's like in some respects, it's ultimately I don't want to say a fatal game, but you are essentially you're gonna have you're eventually you know your hunters, you're dealing with the information you can find on the internet that you can scrounge up through your own hunts or whatever. You're not gonna be well in, necessarily well informed and have all the tools at your disposal for dealing with a freaking werewolf, and sometimes it's just gonna be how you die. In those yeah. final moments. Either that or okay. you have a very particular storyteller that just probably goes and just says, Oh, you roll you roll poorly with like, you know, your investigations. You are now on a watch okay. list. <laughs> I've also yeah. heard Hunter Games ending with conversion into another oh. system where it's like, Congratulations, you all got shovel headed. Welcome to Sabat. Dab. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, just to kind of step back, Shovelhead. So Sabat, um, again, with that kind of like survival of the fittest mentality, fuck you, got mine kind of idea. Sabat, when they embrace, tend to basically grab people, abduct them, and turn them into vampires, and then put dig them in a shallow grave, and then be like, hey, if you can dig yourself out of this shallow grave, welcome to the Sabat. Oh, and if you can't, well, where are you going to go? You can't, fuck you. <laughs> It's not so, a 
Welcome to the dramatic and exciting life of a vampire. It's, hey, you're not dead. Welcome to the fun. Good job. You're somewhat capable. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so joining well, this... Well, because the idea with the Sabbat is that... Or the, the idea of the Sabbat is that you basically, you need your cannon fodder. You're fighting a war. The Sword of Cain falls where it wants. Yeah. So, so Here you are. joining the Sabbat is basically just the opening to Fallout New Vegas, but on a larger scale. <laughs> to some degree. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um... But yeah, like I've I've heard a few hunter games end with you congratulations, you're being converted into other supernaturals now. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> or you all got you're all changelings. Y'all got abducted by yeah, uh, you all changelings. got abducted. Y'all you all got abducted because the idea of changeling, at least in the new wad, I don't think this is how I don't know if how changeling is there a changeling twentieth? Because I thought that's changeling the dreaming is you are Fae, where changeling the lost is you were abducted by the Fae and got stuck in there long enough that you didn't come out normal. Oh yeah. no! You got away. Uh, so you've taken on traits of the Fae uh, is the best way to put it, but your mindset still kind of more or less remains human. Um, but uh, yeah, like you could have like a hunter, co- like a hunter act. I don't I don't know what the term is for a hunter group compact. I don't know. <laughs> um so the idea is in that case is yeah, that they all got abducted and then were able to get get also get back out. Yeah, they're all permanently changed. Congratulations, you're playing a changeling game now. So, um are fey evil? Um in the case of changeling the lost, the fey are basically like eldritch horrors. I wouldn't yeah. they they can be evil, but they're evil from our perspective, from the Fae's perspective, especially like if the Fae is like a god of the hunt or kind of like that kind of archetype. He's just they're, doing what he does. Yeah, That's they're more evil. like chaotic. Yeah, they're nebulously just, kind of chaotic than they, anything they else. They are in they are their nature. They will do as they pl- they just do as they they do as they are made. <laughs> yeah. Is the best way to put it. Um, which supernatural is benevolent? In the world of darkness, none. Yeah. None. Congratulations, everything wants to kill you. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Woo. I mean, you could have, like, maybe good intentions. Yes. I guess. You can like, have good, you can there could be intentions. individuals with good intentions, but yeah. I think overall it's... Yeah. Uh, like, a lot of the World of Darkness supernatural types, and even Hunter, have a, an idea of something called, uh, it's, always, it's sometimes it's differently named, but the idea is something called, like, a humanity scale, which is more or less, how much has your character slipped since the start of the campaign, is the best way to put it. Like, when inevitably that Hunter has to kill the vampire that looks like a child, what does that cost them? When did they... Because... When did they go against their own principles when did when did they yeah. have to comp- oh, yeah when did they have to compromise their own morals in order to get the job done where where did and you draw the line yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so the slippery slope when does it start and how far how fast and how far are you slipping mm-hmm. um oh you gotta make a call okie dokie uh what does the torador do again uh they are specifically i would say they are they're a social leaning vampire clan that likes that sees the beauty in something. Are there stories with good endings? Yes. Ooh. There can be. There can be. Though it may depend on what your definition of good is. Um, so like I would say, say for instance, for the vampire campaign, the Atlantic City one, the ending that that campaign ended on is, in some respects, it was a bad ending. Our coterie was not able to successfully make a bid for Prince. The subsubsequent um, faction that we aligned with to try and support their bid for prince because we thought they were kind of like you know if we if our group can't put a prince on the throne figuratively speaking these people seem like good people or good vampires as well maybe they can kind of like guide the city in a good way uh that bid also failed we were betrayed by a member within our own coterie actually who was oh. su- secretly supporting a malkavian oh jeez mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't talk about that anyways um <laughs> And uh, I'm sorry, chaos. so <laughs> there's a Mal- yeah, that, in that setting ended with a Malkavian prince. I'm sure that will go well. Um, <laughs> and I mean, so I mean, the campaign ended with basically the coterie separating because it was like, well, none of us want to support this prince. We can't stay in the city anymore. We're all persona non grata now. Oh. Uh, we'll disband so, and go our separate ways. So yeah, basically everyone went their separate ways. Some some characters traveled together. Uh, some didn't. 
Uh, I mean, it was a good ending in that, like, it was a narratively satisfying ending. Uh, the characters all lived. We're all like all those vampires could appear in other campaigns or whatever. Um, if they if anything was to kind of continue in that continuity, um, some characters, you know, they achieve their own personal goals in terms of um, any vampire can become a prince as long as you have backing. It's just yeah. that some clans are better yeah. than others at it. <laughs> yeah. Adventure would argue they're the best at it. Yeah, but they make that argument. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, like I mean. I, I would say it was a good ending. It was it was narratively satisfying, but was it a good ending in that we sat we met we achieved all our goals? Oh no. There 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 was a, there's a there was a like let's put it this way the the Malkavian that ended up on the throne was was paranoid, uninterested in actually running the city, just wanted the title, and yep. was going to probably make the city more isolationist. So it was very much like a this is not going to be good for the city. Type of scenario if I, if I recall correctly i could be remembering some stuff wrong but like it was a very self-interested malkavian that was paranoid as hell so it's probably going to start killing any vampire it doesn't see as trustworthy so on and so forth so it was it was generally considered a not a not a good choice mm. mm, mm-hmm I mean, there's really you... no such thing as true vampire royalty. Like, again, the vin- the Ventru will always be the first to say, oh, well, we should be <laughs> vampire royalty because we're awesome and we're good with money. And everybody else is like, boo! You suck! Get off the, get off the stage, you suck! <laughs> and then, and then, and then that's yeah. when the Anarchs, like the, the Bruja, the Malkavian in the back row, just start throwing bottles up at the stage. Fuck exactly. the man! Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so but like, uh... <laughs> then you'll get like the other clans who are just like, I don't care who's in charge as long as you don't kill me. <laughs> Tremere's yeah. are just like, it's okay, we'll yeah. still probably use you anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like you're talking about the Tremere that kind of like exist over there, where it's like, who's Prince yeah. again? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. whatever. We, we're doing our own thing in the pyramid. Do not yep. disturb. Yeah, bye we, bye. Yeah. We have our own problems to deal with. <laughs> exactly. Please don't bother us unless you know the world's on fire, and even then, only if you can't put it out. Yeah. <laughs> just a big do not disturb sign in their yeah, corner. Yeah, basically. <laughs> like do the not like in our room. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, just kind of returning a bit to the end of the last campaign because I know, like, say for instance, like Sasha's Trimi character, she was able to keep running her her gun store, from what I understand. Like she remained. Like I think you were actually one of the few characters that actually stayed in the city. Yeah, um, yeah. I was but, just like, like, I have no reason to go anywhere. I, yeah, I mean. But like you, you were like like your goals were more or less that like you know your your character's kind of motivation was maintaining the gun store, maintaining standing, so on and so forth. So like you kind of like yeah. it was a good ending for your character in the sense that she was going to be fine. I think is the best oh, yeah. way to put it. Everything's um, okay. I mean, whatever. <laughs> and like say for instance, uh, my character, um, I mentioned she was kind of like an assassin vampire. The reason she came to Atlantic City is, or not, the, she, she was originally became a vampire while li- while she was born in Mexico and um because she uh was kind of like trying to deal with like cartel stuff Mm -hmm. and was kind of like her sire kind of got her out of there trying to kind of like get her away from that kind of life but then you know the cartels aren't exactly you know not present in the united (laughs) states either so she just kind of ended up just um you know when she wasn't dealing with uh vampire crap was dealing with um the cartels trying to move north so um like her kind of ending was is like you know, if if you know, without her kind of coterie kind of keeping her grounded in the va- in the vampire world, she just went back to was like, "Fuck it, I'll just go back to killing cartel shit." Back to and Mexico for me. Like, basically, mm-hmm. yeah, she was like, "I'm going south." Bye, everybody. And which isn't necessarily a bad ending for that character either, right? Like, yeah. oh, who is Mari? Mari is our guest today. E. Uh, I'll give. A, yeah. I'll put a quick shout out in the chat so you can go check out Mari's channel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you usually do like a lot of like wargaming content on your uh, channel, right? Yeah, I, or, mostly, I try. I try to do a lot of mostly just model painting and co- like mm. farming and colony sims. At the, well, at the moment, mm. uh, we've been currently obsessed with uh, like a dragon. <laughs> Ooh, nice! Yeah, Ooh. we've been we've been jumping around Edo period mm. Japan, beating people up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Which clan is the most badass? I mean, Subjective. one, it depends on what you're trying to do yeah. um, as a vampire. Like, if you want to be the so the social top dog, you know, 
Ventru, Torador, like even Malkavian, they can all be good at it. If you're looking for, I'm the vampire that, you know, will smash and like physically smash, <laughs> um, to clarify, uh -huh. um, Bruya, Gangrel, like even the right kind of Ventru build can do it because like, yeah. the thing is with vampire, like all of them have something that will augment them physically. And even then like vampires, you know, are still considered better than humans at most things. And also you can have vampires that learn disciplines outside of their quote unquote core disciplines, as long as they meet a tutor from the appropriate clan. So, <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, you could be a, like a Turiador that, you know, has a, you know, maybe a Bruya friend who teaches them how to smash real good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Not yeah. that kind Super of smashing. Strong. Smashing. Not that kind of yeah. smashing. Physically <laughs> I mean, it, you could I also mean, make it could an be argument. both, but... Like oh. a Torador that sees the beauty in combat. Yeah. Sees the beauty yeah. in fighting. Yeah. So. You know, their aesthetic is, you, you know... The, then you have the Toreador filming it saying, but what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> What's the symbolism in this? Can yeah, exactly. I be a pretty Nosferatu? You can, but... And I'm gonna. There's a big but with that. The thing is, like with the Nosferatu, is that you have to, or you have to be able to explain that repulsive flaw. So I've seen some people make the argument is that like you're really beauty, you're really beautiful, but you're too beautiful. Like it's gone wrong somehow, and you're like uncanny valley. You're, you, you've you've stumbled into the yeah. uncanny valley, or you know you're you're very pretty, but you sm like there's like a smell that follows you that smell of death and decay follows you and it is overpowering so people are like oh they're pretty i can't be within 10 feet of you oh god you I'm smell like a up. rancid sewer yeah yeah um because that's, that's the big thing with the nasrati is there has to be something to get that flaw the repulsive flaw in there oh the yeah yeah it's like is, AI is a yeah. <laughs> yeah the AI where it's like you know they're very pretty but they have way too many teeth in their mouths that a yeah. human being would or they've got six fingers yeah. or you know an extra hand coming yeah. out of their the uh -huh. side of their neck or whatever um i remember uh there was i i saw like a nasrati one where they were they were gorgeous but their skin was constantly like cracked, like porcelain. Oh no! Oh, and like yeah. there was like kind of like like red underneath that you could see. So the, like the idea was is like yeah, it's you you can't like they're pretty, but eh, looks wrong. <laughs> Seems unfair. That's yeah. I mean every clan yeah. has their bane. Yeah, and Nosferatu is to be repulsive. Unfortunately, can they succeed at anything? Of course they can. Yeah. They any, they can turn invisible. Vampire. Yeah. Um, I mean there there is the idea that like Nosferatu will struggle perhaps dealing socially with humans, but in places where they can be seen as the monster that they are. So like either, so like vampires have like a meeting place that's called considered neutral ground, which is called Elysium, which is the idea that this is where vampires can meet and be open about their natures, can do their dealing and their brokering. Um, it, it is very much a Camarilla thing, not a Sabbat thing. And it, like Anarchs can sometimes come to Elysium so long as they agree to play by the cam rules for the night. So, so but, no fighting. Um, no fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's called Elysium. Yep. And uh, the, uh, sorry. So like Nosferatu can just go to Elysium and they'll be, they can be out in the open. It's because it's, uh, it's a vampire only club basically. So they don't have to hide any humans that go to Elysium. Generally speaking, not allowed, but there are sometimes a few trusted ghouled humans who may be allowed into Elysium. They know, they know what's up. They, they, they've already kind of been, you know, they've they've already broken Fight Club rule one of you don't talk about Fight Club. So you can. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, in in one of the LARP games I I went to, we had an Osferatu prince. Nobody nobody cared because they were really good at the job and they yeah. didn't care about all of the shiny political stuff. They just wanted to do the job. And so that made it a lot easier for. Characters like mine, who I've never been really strong at the politics side of it, <laughs> I, I won't lie. But yeah, I mean, there were, all the politic characters were like, why Why does nobody care anymore? <laughs> yeah. It's not like how yeah, it used technically, to be. <laughs> the, the only requirement for being the prince of a city is basically everyone else recognizes you as prince of the city. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't matter what <laughs> clan you're from or anything. Yeah. As long as you're as long as you're good at the job and able to enforce your rule, 
And like you have at least a loyal friend or two who, yeah. you know, you can appoint as, as you know, your, your muscle or something, then yeah, mm -hmm. you're good. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember the term. So like usually the idea is that the, the if, if, a, if a person is prince, they usually have a trusted kind of circle. Uh, usually the rules I believe are harpy. Yep. Uh, you've got also your sheriff. And then there's a few others, but Harpy and Sheriff are kind of the big two one. The Harpy is kind of like your core social calendar minder person. They're, they're kind of like your social personal right secretary. Yeah. Your personal so, secretary, uh, for lack of a better term. Unfortunately, they keep track of boons. Yeah, I have Thank the... You. I have I actually have the Camarilla book up here. Uh, so there's, oh, yeah? there's the Prince, obviously. Right. The Seneschal. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. the Seneschal. Yes, yes, right. uh, the Primogen Council. Ooh, yeah. yes, the primogen. Yeah. The clan whip, the sheriff, <laughs> the herald, the principal yep. of fate, uh, the shadow, and the keeper of Elysium. Yes. Yep. Oh. Yep. So, so the the sheriff is basically the person who acts as quote unquote police chief of vampires. So more or less, like they will kind of act as the you know if the prince is deemed someone has broken vampire laws or broken a tradition, the sheriff will be the one enforcing that decision of the prince if the prince doesn't do it themselves so if i go back to bloodlines the big guy that like decapitates your sire that he would have been lacroix's sheriff. probably that was the sheriff yeah, yeah. that's probably a sheriff um so yeah then you've got like uh the primogen council which is usually like the trusted kind of like advisors to the um to the prince, to the prince. usually there's a there's a primogen one for each clan so you'll have like a Tremere primogen, a Venture primogen. Like usually, the 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 clan of the sitting prince won't have a primogen because they're it's, prince. Yeah. <laughs> so but, it's basically so it's basically like, like safe, the yeah. the higher up trusted guy from the other clans, essentially. Yeah. To pro provide like advice. So yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yep. Sorry, Sasha. You were saying. Oh no! I was uh, my vampire tailor that I mentioned earlier. For instance, I was mm. the Tremere primogen. During my time, and it was incredibly stressful, and I hated. Oh, I bet. <laughs> it, yeah, because I mean, you are essentially representing the interests of your clan, and it can, especially if if the clan doesn't think their interests are being well represented by their MP, <laughs> they're so going to. to... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So... Uh, a lot of the times, the primogen is almost like considered like a throwaway role because nobody wants to deal mm. with the politics. Correct. It's like, all right, who 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 draws the short straw this time? Yeah, ha -ha, you get to deal with all the politics stuff while I'm <laughs> over here doing all my premier stuff, and it's like, yep. curse you. <laughs> I'm gonna work my way up the pyramid. You have to deal with the politics. Bye. Yeah, yeah basically, have fun. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it is. Um... Like, Vampire very much lends itself to very political dealing games, unless you're dealing either with a coterie that's isolated or more of a Sabbat-driven game, which, uh, I mean, it also could be pretty po politically driven, just different politics. Um, yeah, but yeah, imagine you can... Sabbat politics is more like, right, where can we mess up the, the Camarilla the best yeah. today? Yeah. <laughs> Or just infighting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Honestly. Just like power the, the Sabbat, struggles. The Sabbat have no loyal, like, aside from those that have been, who've been, you know, somewhat compelled under Revaldery, the majority of, the majority of Sabbat are just going to turn on, themse on themselves as just as likely as they're going to turn on others, so. You owe me 50 bucks. <laughs> just walks I up and just boom. Oh, let's fight in Denny's. <laughs> we, we're, we're coming back to this Denny's. Denny's yeah, the Denny's the Denny's the Denny's seems fight. very central yeah. to this. <laughs> The All right, Flora, Denny. Sasha, we gotta we gotta do a hydrate and stretch. Oh, you can you do it too far if you want, but as a oh. as our guest. Oh. All right, Bellamy wants to know why do I tend to pick Clan Ventru? Um, yes, Elizabeth, why? Yeah. So I'm gonna say two reasons. One, I tend to be more comfortable in social build characters than I am in combat monkey characters. So Ventru tends to meet that requirement. The other reason is this is something Flora and Sasha can verify. I have a tendency when I'm creating characters, if I'm if I'm not running off a specific other strong concept, like say for instance, like my assassin character, I tend to make bitches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's adventure, true. Adventure, adventure yeah, lends true. itself well to a bitch. That's true. Yeah. Like just bitching yeah. at people and all that. Well, no, being a bitch. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
I'm trying to yeah. remember something I specifically did that was particularly bitchy with my vamp one of my vampires. <laughs> I mean, not not in a bad way necessarily yeah, no. either. It's yeah, just... no, I, I've always loved your character. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm She's always. Like she always just makes the head bitch. Yeah. 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 Bad bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're catty bitches. bitches. Clash of Lara, please <laughs> confirm. I am confirming. Yeah, I just confirmed. But yeah, like I would say, like say for instance, um, in Flora, Flora not too long ago ran a Legend of the Five Rings campaign, and definitely my character in that campaign, while she was a combat focused character, uh, she was a Scorpion Clan. She was a bitch, and yeah, she was great. I love. I man. remember at one point we all the characters had come to this village. The village was under siege by bandits. And they're like, they've, the bandits have abducted all the children. We, and like everyone's making plans to go rescue the children. And my character is just like, we've got places to be. Oh. Why <laughs> are we dealing with this? Like, by like my character was like, literally, like, why are we dealing? Why are we going to go try and negotiate with these bandits to get the children dealt with? We got places to be. And what's going to happen after we, if we rescue these children, unless we murder all the bandits, what's going to happen next? I'm like, I'm sorry, but how is this our problem? <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. Like, you said, yeah. Like, how is this our problem? Yeah, and that was great. <laughs> and, yeah, mm-hmm. like, sometimes, sometimes, like, you know, it, like, like, in the end, the decision was still made to go, and Nisei still did participate in basically a cleanup function when it did inevitably turn into kill all the bandits. Yeah. Well, you didn't kill all of them. You did take, most you of know, them. you, you yep. killed most of the ones that were outside, at least. The ones that were yeah. inside did surrender. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you know that that action of like you know them staying and taking that time to do that did have consequences of you know uh, them being found out to be there, but you you don't know the answer. To that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what but those consequences were. I guess were all at this I mean to say but... is that. Um... Yeah, I, I I tend to like I would say maybe perhaps Nisei is maybe a little more callous than bitchy, but yeah. or at least goal oriented. I don't know. Maybe I'm just yeah. trying to make excuses Results for the character driven. I made. <laughs> Results driven. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was. Uh, oh, she's great. But yeah, like I I I would say like my quote unquote Stephanie the Venture Vampire also kind of like slid in that direction of kind of like had a bit of that. You know, this isn't how is this my problem? My my interests are to my coterie. Or to, you know, maybe to my sire, you know, I don't have to deal, you know, I don't have to, you know, be nice to you. I don't have to, you know, I have, you know, I'm a vampire. I'm a freaking vampire. I don't have to be fucking nice about my wording. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, your butt dialed. Oh, no. Oh, no. Who did you butt oh. dial? Hopefully oh, no, they I, d- I butt dial people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> And then you're just like, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I've all I've also played a couple catty bitches over the years as well in terms of uh, characters. Not all of them, but like I would say, um, the the character I ran in the Atlantic City game, and I mean Sasha can confirm or deny. I would say she had bitchy moments, but she was overall pretty nice. Yeah. In terms of yeah, I'll yeah. confirm. Yeah. Especially compared to some other vampires. <laughs> I, I would say uh, the, the the vampire character in that name. Her name was Mercedes. Um, I would say she was more blunt than yeah. bitchy. I think is maybe yeah. the best way to put it. I'd agree. Yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mercedes, yeah. I, I named that vampire Mercedes the vampire. That was like a broader bitchy name, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Definitely. it was it was weird. It was kind of weird because like I was I was attempting a bit more of like a combat, but I was aiming I was initially aiming for more of a stealth build on that character, and that's not what ended up happening because oh. I remember one of our one of our kind of like first combats against another vampire group when the whole you know bid for Prince was being considered and everything like that. Um, Stealth had already gone out the window. She couldn't do that anymore because, like, one of the kind of signature powers of that vampire clan was that they could kind of create, like, cones of silence in their direct area. So, like, say, for instance, her favorite thing was to have a shotgun, but fire it from within the cone of silence. So it's like, can't hear the shotgun. I mean, (laughs) a shotgun of silence. They do make shotgun suppressors. (laughs) I mean, 
mean, but you don't need it when you've got the cone of silence power. But anyways, um, I remember I, I had like a run of really good roles. So I, I was combining celerity, the shotgun and like some good movement choices. And like, I think I downed three vampires in one turn. Because <laughs> you can use celerity to either go fast to improve your initiative or you can use it to buy extra turns mm-hmm. within your initiative. And I think I had done the, the buy extra turns. And I had I had a run of like some really good roles, so it was just like basically like like to, to more or less be blunt. When our coterie was making a bid for Prince Mercedes, was basically on track to be sheriff if it had been successful, because she was pretty much like she went into she went into basically every combat and just wrecked everything. There was only one like the sheriff of the current prince that was trying to keep power was a gangrel. I think he was like the only actual threat to her. Oh, no. Uh, sorry, I, I have to step away for just a minute. I'll okay, be right back. Sure. Oh, uh, 16 bow. Uh, that is Mal. He was our fourth member, but he had to leave due to real life reasons. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're, we're still keeping him around a little bit. Yeah. The, emo- the emotes in memory of Mal. Yeah. But yeah. We had four members, now we're down to three. Yeah, that's okay. Well, yep. no, Mal, Mal is off having an adventure. Adventure. <laughs> well, sometimes you got that real love stuff's got to take priority, unfortunately. So, yeah. Yeah. Oof. yeah. You okay, Marty? Yeah, no, it's just a bit. The head cold hit me a bit. <laughs> oh, oh, no, are you okay? Yeah, no, just. Oh. He's holding on there? Yeah, yeah, I could, I could hold on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, what else is there? I think. How how do you make well, a character? <laughs> so, funnily enough, I do actually have ready. Uh, let's see if I can get it. To show I. Well... Oh let's God. See. So yeah, there we go. So you, I got the character sheet. You can see it. Ta-da! This isn't the full character sheet. It's just the top of it. But yeah, if you want to make a vampire character, here's how you do it. Yep. Yeah, so 5th edition, so Sasha, Flora, or when Flora gets back, it is actually a bit different than what you're used to. Uh, I remember when I was reading through it, I was like, oh, they really kind of changed it a bit. Yeah, look at that character sheet. I did it. Yeah, that's pretty I nice. had forethought when I was getting ready today. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. Uh, are we going to play? I don't know. I mean... I do have a fillable character sheet here that came with the stuff I got from Humble, so let's see. I mean, let's put it this way. I think, to some degree, having this this thing today has kind of, like, reawakened the... The, the, ooh, the, 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 the drive. The, the, the beast has been awoken. Oh. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> so, so to speak. But yeah, the, the general idea with a vampire character is that everything is driven by dots. And mm-hmm. you put in a number of dots equal to your ability. So, like, say, for instance, you could have a character with ah, three dots in strength. And those three dots kind of represent the number of dice that you would roll um, oh. when you have to do a strength check. And you'd usually combine it with a skill. So, like, say, for instance, if you're like, I'm going to take a gun and shoot that other vampire, that's going to be a dexterity plus firearms check. To see oh. whether or not you can hit the target, so what and you roll, you roll is... and you roll d tens um, to determine your success, and each dot represents one dice that you would get in your pool. Ah, You're... fair enough. If you, uh, yeah, it might be a bit blurry for you. Um, I did try and zoom it in quite a bit, um, but I could probably maybe make. It oh a bit no, bigger. it's it's fine because I like say I've got I've got oh, okay. a version of the sheet up on my screen as well, so. Oh, okay, I'm 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 more meant for our for our oh. chat. Um, All right. One of, the, one of the people commented that it's a little too. And it is. There we go. I'm I'm not putting our. I'm, you have to deal with our heads though. Big fat heads. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. By the way. Hello, Welcome Flora. We're, we're looking at the character sheet right now. For character the sheet. Yeah. What's the point of charisma? So, basically, in in World of Darkness, you've got your physical, social, and your mental traits, right? And you've got, so like, say for physical, you've got strength, dexterity, and stamina. So strength is your your ability to punch good, or not punch good, but like your ability to do feats of immediate strength. Dexterity is kind of your ability to kind of like be wiggly and flexible. And then stamina is like your ability to like do like marathons to kind of go the distance. So the idea with like social is like your charisma is your ability to be like immediately charming. 
in terms of just, you know, you walk into the room, you smile at people, you get their attention, they are amenable to talking to you. So that's kind of your charisma. Your manipulation is your ability to convince others to do things that necessarily they may not necessarily not want to do, but like it's your bargaining. It's your ability to kind of like on the fly negotiate. And then composure is your ability to kind of keep your own control in terms of someone told you some bad news. Do you want them to know that you're angry about the news? Roll composure. See if you can keep a straight face. Um, in your mental, you've got intelligence, which is kind of like your ability, your, your book learning, whether or not, you know, you know a fact or can recall something. Wits is kind of more your ability to kind of think on the fly, which is kind of like... Can you think of that witty retort to that person who, um, you know, said something not nice? And the, like, uh, the other thing I like with wits, I think I see a lot of is, like, you, um, can you, like, in the middle of, like, having, you know, in the middle of, like, a tense situation, can you remember if something is combustible or not or something like that? So it's kind of like how you think under fire is maybe the best way to put it. And then uh, the last one, resolve, kind of, again, falls onto that more kind of like a fortitude type thing. Like, how much can you stick with your convictions when under fire? Um, so, because like, you know, if you get mentally exhausted, if you burn out, that's basically a character would be, maybe would, would have low resolve at that point, because it's going to be like, you know, you're not going to like, if someone tells you to like do something, you're gonna be like, oh, fine, whatever, just do what you want. I'm tired, right? That's low resolve. So, but yeah, I that could that could definitely be an idea. Uh, in terms, like we've we've done a couple like one shot or mini campaigns. Like I did an Exalted one, which is a sister kind of campaign to the World of Darkness. <laughs> yeah. If you wanted to basically introduce stupid amount of superpowers, <laughs> and um. We've also done, like, I've done a couple of one-shots of, like, Hunter. I did a one-shot of what turned out to be Changeling <laughs> for <laughs> Halloween one year. Oops. Have I played Disco Elysium? I'm actually, um, I did it once on stream. I died. A chair killed me. A chair? Oh, no. It was, it was a very uncomfortable chair, and I died. Oh, no. Which is, if you're familiar with Disco Elysium, is completely in keeping with the setting. <laughs> um, I've, been, I've been continuing to play it off stream. Um, I'm steadily making progress. I am also making terrible decisions and regretting all of them. And but also it's it's very it's a very interesting game, but <laughs> you know the part I'm talking about. Of course you do. <laughs> uh, Killed I, my I chair. Just, okay. I want to inform everybody that Gibson has just brought me his toy. Oh, Gibson! Oh, my buddy. buddy. He dragged Aww. the mouse on a string with a stick all the way in here. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> That's a toy. Oh, Gibson wants to play. He does. Tell Gibson that I love him. Uh, I yeah, did it I once it. on stream uh, last year. It was just it was just one stream. The VOD the VOD will be on the YouTube channel. It it did it did go out over there. But I only did it I only did it the one time. And then my like literally that was a cursed stream. My internet was crapping out the entire time, so I ended up having to cut stream early. It was very annoying. <laughs> oh no! Oh yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. So bleh. Anyways, or bleh. As Blair. 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 Um, but yeah, so for Flora and Sasha, um, in terms of how you assign attributes in Vampire Fifth, it's no longer you pick which what which what which among is kind of your first, second, and third, and then assign oh. thoughts. It's now more you pick one to get four, you pick one to get one, you pick I think three to get three, and then the rest get two, and you oh. you just divvy it up however you want. That's oh. weird. That yeah, I, I remember reading it and I was like, oh, I'm not used to that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds weird. <laughs> but when I finally I mean, I get kinda... a hang of the old system, they bring in something new. Well, I mean, you don't, to be fair, if you don't want to, you don't have to play Vampire yeah. Fifth Edition. <laughs> yeah, the old, the old systems are always still there. You just keep playing Vampire 20th Edition forever and ever. Yeah. And ever and ever. <laughs> and the same thing is kind of with the skills. Um, they kind of have like versions where you can pick like you want to if you want to be a specialist, this is how you would spend your skill points versus uh, or sorry, skill dots uh, versus if you want to be a jack of all trades or whatever. Um, just to kind of give a bit of clarification in a tri uh, uh, attributes, um, one dot is weaker than human average. Wow. In that trait. So like, say, for instance, if you have an intelligence of one, 
probably means that you maybe not be able to read. It may mean that you're very like you you may um be neurotypical or uh not neurotypical, neuro, like um there could be something like a like a mental I don't want to call it a handicap, but that's the only word my brain is giving me right now. But like you are somehow lower than average for one reason or another in that trait. Um, if you maybe have one charisma, you are very socially inept. You say the wrong thing when you shouldn't be, so on and so forth. Uh, two dots in anything is considered human average. Congratulations, you are normal. Yeah, I guess, yeah, sorry, neurodivergent might be maybe more the term. Um, oh but it could be, um, depending on how you express that neurodivergence, because I could see it like you can make an argument for one charisma for neurodivergence as opposed to one intelligence or what have you. It's, it's something you would work out with your storyteller how you want to express it if you if you were to go that route. Um, three dots. Typically, it's is, not recommended for you to leave something with one dot. It, it's which is surprising that they make it part of the default build now yeah. in fifth edition because like usually I've seen so many storytellers be like, don't leave something at one dot because it means you're less than human average at it. I mean, don't um, you have extras though? Like the extra you could. XP? You could if you're not playing. Um, there's usually yeah, the what you, Sasha's referring to is a lot of vampire games allow for 15 bonus XP, which mm. yes, you could use it to then buy up additional dots in your attributes. Um, however, that is at storyteller discretion. They could choose that if you like, say for instance, if you're going for a shovelhead campaign and you were braced five minutes ago, they'd be like, no, you don't get that phone bonus 15. Your congrat- congratulations, you you deal with it. That's fair. So it's it's a discretion, but. Um, yeah. So so two is human average. Three is slightly better than average. So you are, you know, particularly skilled in that thing. So like, say, for instance, if you're maybe if you do martial arts at the on the side, you might have three dexterity as opposed to two or something like that. And then four having four dots is considered to be like pretty peak peak physical condition for a human, more or less. And then five is kind of to go into that. You, are you an Olympian at this thing? Because you're at, you know, Captain America, perfect human capability when you're hitting five dots. And then you could technically go to six or higher, but that's when you're going into supernatural tiers where, you know, you need, you need supernatural powers to push you to that level. So, like, say, for instance, a lot of werewolves, when they go into their werewolf form, their strength usually goes six or higher, which yeah. is reflecting that supernatural tier of strength. Drunk. They, and so, yeah, like that's usually why, you know, you know, werewolves, it's like, congratulations, you just turn into a form that immediately boosts you to seven strength. Bam. Because <laughs> keep in mind, each dot equals a dice you're rolling. And yeah. um, in the system of World of Darkness, generally speaking, unless the storyteller has adjusted the difficulty, a roll of six or higher is considered one success on a dice. Uh, if you roll a 10, you get two successes on that dice. Usually for most mundane tasks, you only need one success. So if you're rolling 10 dice, you only need one to show up with a six or higher. You're probably going to succeed. Oh no, Twitch crashed. That's bad. Oh no. Oh, no. Um, which is bad. Okay. Oh, so Reaver has a question in my chat. Okay. Uh, what if I want to be a really old vampire who's very skilled with utility type things and knows a lot, but is not terribly powerful in terms of violence? How do? Um, you mm. could very much focus on a very social mental build, depending on what kind mm. of type of build you're wanting on that. There is a lot of like, the st- there is stuff in the, I've seen it both in older vampire books as well as current ones, that if you want to go for more elder vampires, you're probably looking at higher gen, which usually means you're going to need bonus experience to buy uh, the merits and advantages that push you towards a higher generation. And um, oh, we got a hydrate re- stretch and posture. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Grim. Grim. And um, there's also then you could also look at your disciplines in terms of um, focusing on those that are more favor. Like, say, for instance, if you're looking for like a vampire that's more socially capable, you know, your auspexes, your dominates, your presence presence would be better disciplines than if you're not looking for a particularly strong physical build, you know, avoid fortitude, avoid uh, celerity and so on and so forth. So, like, it, it is generally doable. Um, most vampires, uh, you can buy out of clan disciplines, yeah. uh, usually cost more XP wise. And you do usually need a storyteller justification. So like, say for instance, you need maybe a va- another vampire you've met that will mentor you in those traits, uh, or in those disciplines who are usually willing to teach you. Cause like, say for instance, you know, 
Tremere are supposed to be the gatekeepers of, say, for instance, blood rituals and sorcery. So they're not going to teach that to a Ventru being like, hey, vampire capitalist here, you want to teach me that blood sorcery? They'll be like, no, you are not admitted into our club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could still, I guess you could still technically get away with being like an older vampire if it's like you know you could still be at a weaker generation you've just you know been yeah. around for a long time well there's also as i mentioned like when you get embraced as a vampire you're stuck at whatever age you were at the moment embraced so if you want to be yeah. a, if you want to play a 60 year old 60 year old man who got embraced congratulations you're 60 forever yeah, <laughs> yeah. Until, i mean i guess it depends on what kind of old you mean yeah, there's that whether you like, like old like a physically old person or like just a vampire that's been around for a while yeah, yeah. There's, with a vampire, there's two types of old because, like, say for instance, you know, there's the age you uh, of your embrace, so you're kind of a parent age. How you'll pass in human society if you try and stay in that, and also then the age um, that you are in terms of your number of vampire years under your belt. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, that is another thing to note is um, it's not written strictly in the traditions, but it's generally you don't embrace kids. Yeah. It's like one of those un unspoken yeah. don't do it. Because <laughs> uh, one, as I said, you're generally stuck where you were. So you're dealing with a person, uh, you know, when you embrace a kid, while they may mentally mature over time, they're physically are never gonna and they can't function really. If any, like, you know, if, if you embrace a human around the age of like 25 to 30 or whatever, they can kind of stay in one spot for quite some time and no one's going to notice they ain't aging. Or that they're just aging very well, or right? Or if you age a child. Or if you yeah, embrace if you, a child. They're going to notice pretty quickly when they ain't aging. It's just like You're only going to get like a year or two before it's like, why yeah. Why you no get taller? Why are you still five? Just like, hold yeah. on. <laughs> You've had your 10th birthday the last five years now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so yeah, basically, the, the a lot of I've seen a lot of vampire settings have the rule don't embrace kids, and yeah, it's it's generally for the same practical reasons of it's very noticeable very fast so, yeah, when a kid ain't aging. Reaver's concept here is like a vampire that's been in academia for centuries and teaches every night class you can think of. Worst he can do oh. is fail you in classical Latin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's certainly a concept you could. Yeah, definitely. you could do mm -hmm. as long as like your your storyteller was fine with yeah, you like know more your of... your character hat is like significantly older than you know everyone else, but they're not that much more powerful than them. They've just yeah, been sitting yeah. teaching classical Latin for the last two hundred <laughs> yeah, years. Yeah, the vampire he not really doing he anything. Things, but he can't really fight. <laughs> yeah, and then that, that that's in vampire that's very doable like they're just yeah. basically laying low they they attend the requisite number of elysium meetings so as not to piss anybody off and just goes over there shows up and says hi here's my membership card don't yeah. don't kill here me. my dues here are my dues uh, i'm here for the yeah. pot look <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm here for i'm here for the blood fondue fountain thank yeah, you I see yeah. yeah i brought uh i brought a macaroni salad <laughs> I, I get but yeah. I know. But yeah, in terms of character creation, so yeah, you've got your attributes, your skills, um, and then something that's kind of new, I think, for Flora and Sasha would be your touchstones and convictions, which is kind of interesting. Your your convictions are kind of like your code of morals of more or less what you try to stick to in terms of kind of maintaining your humanity. So oh, like okay, I okay. won't kill. Oh. Um I will. I guess would it would it I will be try like to be fair in all my dealings with people? I don't do harm, like stuff like that. Would it be like vices and virtues, kind of, or kind, is that still on there? Um, virtues and vices are gone. Okay, uh, it's been replaced by ambition and desire. Oh, I uh, see. Ambition is more meant to represent your long-term vampire goals, where desire is more represents your immediate vampire needs. If that makes oh, sense. Oh, I see. Like, I see. Yeah. Like, you know, my 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 ambition is to. To kill my sire because they're a terrible person or whatever reason you want to make up for killing your sire. Whereas your um, desire might be to, you know, have uh, have a blood something. I don't, I don't know. Have a blood something. Okay. Blood something. Oh, no. <laughs> you, only, Valerie, you only have to write down the rules if you can't remember them. True uh, enough. That's, that's why we have PDS and we have books. Yeah. yeah. 
I, 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 yeah. do, I do not memorize shit. I use a book. Huh. Um, but yeah, so you've got your convictions, which kind of represents like your mm. kind of core beliefs, I think is the best way to put it in terms of what kind of keeps you, keeps you sane, keeps you human. Um, in terms of not slipping too far into the beast or what, whatever you want to call it, where your touchstones are supposed to be kind of like the items or people that also kind of help keep you there. So like your touchstone, like maybe if in life you were married before you got embraced, your husband or wife can be your touchstone in terms of keeps you grounded, kind of keeps you sane. Uh, it could be kids. Uh, it could be maybe a particular item, like maybe a, um, a necklace or something like that. It could be other people. Maybe it could be a business that you're associated with. It's just things that you would work out with your storyteller in terms of what kind of keeps you yeah. you, for a lack of a better term. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the purpose of these things, Bellamy is asking what the point of them is. It, mm-hmm. It's it's more like a it's character flavor, basically. Yeah. Your motivation. You your role like, play yeah, character. it kind of motivation, it kind of like flavors, you know, it's it's stuff to kind of think about so you're not going into the campaign as being like, Hi, I'm Joe the Vampire. <laughs> I have Joe no, the vampire. I have no reason to be here. Just someone embraced me one day for the lulls and I just yeah. want to go to Denny's. I just want to fight the Denny's parking lot. You you also don't necessarily have to have them be clear at the start of your game either. Like if, if, you know, if over the course of, you know, a couple of sessions, you know, you suddenly have a really great inspiration for whatever, you know, something in the game makes you want to be like, oh, my ambition is to, you know, find out what's happening or, you know, become the prince or whatever. It's like you can you can discover that over time, but it's yeah. it's it's just to like, it's it's flavor text. Yeah, for the, the the one that does have a mechanic effect is called. Uh, sorry, just scrolling back to the top is, and this is I think also kind of new to fifth edition. It's called your predator, which is oh. um, it oh. flavors your beast in terms of how you oh. prefer to get blood. Oh, I see. So, like, say for instance, What's one your type predator, of predator flavor. What's your predator flavor? So, like, I think one is, like, Sandman, where it's, like, your preferred type of getting blood is to find people who are sleeping and drink blood from them when they're sleeping. Or, okay. Um, or things like all, that. They're all very, like, clan-specific, I think, as well. They, I think, I think some of them are slanted more towards certain clans. Yeah, because, like, um, there, there's one that they slant very towards Toreador called Seed Queen. Oh, yeah, Seeing Queen and Siren both yeah. very much scream Torador. Like, Whereas, like, say, for instance, Nosferatu, Sandman kind of plays into that. Because you, you, you don't have to be seen. You don't have to be seen. Sorry, so the Predator is specifically how you like to feed off of humans in terms of getting your blood. Ventru are the clan that have the limitation of they want specific types of humans to meet their blood needs, I think is the best way to put it. Whereas, you know someone with the Sandman predator type will drink from any human as long as they're sleeping where Aventru might be like, I will only drink from people with a plus blood when they're sleeping. <laughs> so they just get more specific, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, again, I, I, I think that's kind of a bit of a heavy penalty for the Ventru, but maybe I'm just biased because I like to play Ventru anyway. Also, uh, I think there's like, there's like another Ventru type where it's like, they, you know, or not sorry, not Ventru. Another predator type where it's like they prefer violence of some sort to be part of the feeding process, which is like again, excuse dark, oh, yeah. but I think it's like some is vampires. It, mm-hmm. Is it cleaver? Cleaver, yes. I I recall that the game has like a heavy like only take with storyteller approval. You talk about this one before you take it type of rule. So <laughs> Yeah, I just um, uh I found a list of them and I'm looking mm. at it. it's like, oh, some of these you would have to be like You'd have Me. to talk to your storyteller mm-hmm. to like <laughs> grave robbery. You can only feed from fresh corpses. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> just Welcome the to vampire. So, so with the grave robber one, it's just like that meme of the guy rubbing his hands behind the tree. It's just like mm. payday. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> you're a celebrity, and you can only feed from fans or worshippers. I mean, that would go oh, in the, no. the beast that one, yeah. concept. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Osiris. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. It's called Osiris. Yeah. Because like so, it even yeah. says in the example here, in life you might have been a <laughs> or DJ, a, pick a one. writer. What kind of a predator would I be? <laughs> oh. Uh, oh no, hold on. Let me let me look at all these options, and I'll tell you. Tell <laughs> me. Let me tell you. So so meanwhile, so they've also got like. 
uh, your clan vein, which you kind of went into when I was talking about the clans in terms of like basically the kind of like restriction. So like say for instance, we're returning back to like for Bruya, their ban is that they frenzy very easily. Uh, for Ventru, they have to be picky about where they're getting their blood. Nosferatu, their bane is congratulations, you ugly somehow. So on and so forth. So you'd write the details there down. Um, you've also got your disciplines, which I was talking about. Those are your vampire powers. Uh, your health and willpower get calculated based off of like your resolve and stamina, I think, determine where your health and willpower end up. Mm -hmm. Humanity usually starts at seven. Uh, for most campaigns. Hunger is the other kind of new mechanic of uh, Vampire Fifth in terms of, it represents in terms of how much blood, how much blood you've kind of got on you and how hungry you're getting if you haven't fed recently is the best way to put it. And it kind of is like a balancing act because when you have hunger, you actually get bonus dice Ooh. to your pools. Oh. But you have to roll, the, the recommendation is you roll these dice in a different color to your other dice, uh, or some other way of representing them to be separate from your kind of core dice pool. Because the idea is that if you get successes on your hunger dice, it but not away. on your, no, it doesn't take one away. Oh. It represents the beast succeeding, not you. Oh. oh. So if you get successes on your hunger dice, but not on your kind of core dice, Say, for instance, like maybe you're the example I saw and this is in the loading ready run campaign. Um, they were they were in a car chase and they were trying to get away from some bikers and they got a hunger dice success. Not, so the beast succeeded. So what the car, what the, how that was interpreted between the storyteller and the player was basically the beast was like, I'm not trying to get away. I want these bikers off my tail now. And basically slammed on the brakes, and the motorcycles slammed into the back of the van they were in. <laughs> no, so it, oh. it's a success. The bikers weren't chasing anymore, but that was the beast just <laughs> making the decision, not the character. In some respects, the road rage kicked in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the road rage. So yeah. like, and it can be like diff other diff different ways. And there's also something in the system called now a messy critical, where like if you roll in the in the game of in this game because each dice is determined what to be a success or a failure. If you get a ten on a dice, it's considered a critical, which is double successes. Um, so instead of counting as one success, it counts as two. Um, if the hunger dice is where you get your crits. Uh, it calls into something called the messy critical because it's like again you're succeeding you're succeeding really well it's still succeeding. the beast it's still oh, the no. beast doing it <laughs> <laughs> so like say for instance like I think an example given in the book was talking about like if you're trying to be stealthy the beast doesn't give a fuck about stealth gets a crit on the hunger die so if you get if you get a crit on the <laughs> hunger dice yeah you might tear out that guy's throat but guess what your group ain't in stealth anymore because you just tore out some guy's throat. <laughs> in the middle of a crowded area. In the middle of a crowded area. Congratulations. Masquerade? You also just committed that. <laughs> you just committed a masquerade breach. Now humans are asking why that guy's throat is torn out. Oh my god. Bot salts. Why does that mean it's <laughs> fine? <Bot> salts. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's the the hunger system is interesting. I I've seen um some older vampire players like who are around, who've been around more since like sec second and things like that have been like, well, that was the system like, you know, cause frenzy is still a thing in this game being like, well, no, the beast is represented by frenzies, not so yeah. much by the hunger dice. Cause especially because like, sometimes you don't necessarily control, like if you're, if you've got hunger dice in play, then you don't necessarily control when the beast is coming out when, cause like, it's going to go to much more to chance, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, so I've seen some mixed reception in terms of, the hunger dice. I think it's. I think it's interesting, but it, it also is just easy enough to remove. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. always just not engage with you, something. You, yeah, yeah. You could just say congratulations for the purposes of our dice rolls. Hunger is always zero. You don't get hunger dice. And yeah. you know they'll represent the desire for vampires to feed to be represented by some other mechanic or what have you. Oh, it could be a house ruled out. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, I mean, that's honestly that's true of anything. Yeah, that's true yeah, of any I mean, rule. Yeah, and you I don't mean, like, like it, do your own, do your don't, own. Don't use it. No, I yeah. mean, it's not yeah. like well, you know, the company that owns, I forget who owns World of Darkness now. I mean, it used to be White Wolf, but it, I don't so think it's them anymore. Renegade now. I think yeah. Renegade is just the store that carries it. I don't think they're the publisher. I don't I, know. But again, mm, who owns it? I don't know. Probably don't care. Not that I don't care, but. Um, they're not going to kind of, you know, roll up in the middle of your game and be like, you're doing it wrong. 
You're doing it wrong. <laughs> they they're, oh, they they just show up at your house. Yeah. Like six o'clock on a Thursday night when you're playing yeah. and be like, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, no, that's so I mean uh, it says re- manufacturer renegade game studios. Uh, oh fair enough. Heard owner here says like on the wiki uh, from twenty fifteen to onwards is Paradox Interactive. Ah, Paradox. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Paradox is the parent and Renegade is, like, the publisher. Yeah, that might be, like, their publishing yeah. thing. Wing or whatever. Also, I guess it would make sense why Paradox are the ones working behind Bloodlines 2. Yeah. So, there is... It's a complicated web of capitalism. They're all ventures. The end. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyways. Is, so... Is it sorry? okay if we end off here because I, the oh, yeah. cold is oh, starting to yes. hit up into my eyes. <laughs> oh, no, no into the ice. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. we've got a migraine starting too, so. Oh, oh no, no, yeah, yeah, this is... Ah. Oh, no. Everyone's I'm falling sorry. apart. Oh, God. Yeah. Everyone uh, feel better. Oh, yeah, no. But, you. I mean, it, it is also, like, about yeah, five o'clock, so. Oh, yeah. That's... But, yeah, all right. Well, oh, sorry. we got to quit hydrate. hydrate. Shit, thank you. Yeah. Alright. Oh, Ryan wants me to sing him the Whoa. song of my people. Okay. <laughs> sing us out. Sing us out, okay. Laura. Alright, yeah, you get the schedule stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> be shark do 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 be shark do 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 Blue be shark do 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 Blue be shark. I'm sorry for everyone on my stream. <laughs> <laughs> Blue be shark do 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 do. Blue be shark do 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 do. Blue be shark. I'm sorry. I have to do all my redeems at the same time. <laughs> all right. Well. Um. So yeah, I'll just uh, kind of we we'll just go. Uh, Mari, if you want to drop off or if you want to end your stream, we're just going to go over our schedule for the next week. But uh, thank you so much for joining us. I hope I hope yeah, you learned you. something. I hope this was helpful to your oh maybe, definitely yeah. vampire campaign. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was a fun stream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I just like need it. to now find a group to play with. <laughs> yeah, the the hardest challenge of them all. Socializing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just finding a group and finding a time everyone is available okay. yeah no, I will yep. just uh, dip out from the discord so yes. I can just go from with my guys but thank you again yep. and thank yeah, you yeah, all yeah. to yeah. the f- lovely folks in your chat yeah. and yeah, I will thank see you, you guys you so around much. yeah for yeah. sure yes and please, please feel yeah. better get some rest yeah, yeah, get some rest. I hope better. better soon <laughs> thank you yeah. bye 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 Okay, so yes, I will be ending off the stream here. I want to thank you guys for coming by, and they were amazing. The dungeon lounge were amazing. If uh, Reaver, could you uh, give an SO to them while I uh, find us someone to raid? Oh God, my quick actions bar is borked. Uh, OBS, why? Thank you, Reaver. But yes, uh, I'll hopefully be back. I will be back on Tuesday, hopefully, if this cold doesn't get worse. And I will be announcing something tomorrow. I'm going to wait till tomorrow, though, because I need some rest first. But yes, uh, I'll have a schedule out as well tomorrow. Uh, But yeah, let's see. Who can we raid? Let's see who 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 be who be the victim tonight. Yay! T- thank you, Coop, and yes, thank you for the, thank you for the biddies. Uh, you know, let's go to Celine. Let's go, let's go raid Celine. <laughs> chicken noodle soup. Oh, chicken soup would be lovely right now. But yeah, I will I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.